folks. He can kick a 50-yard field goal. He can position the football any way he likes yep. on punting the football. So that's a weapon that the Davidson Warriors are going to have to utilize. And they're going to have to defend the deep ball. They're going to have to get that pressure on Tyler Underwood. They've given up some explosive plays throughout this season. So it'll be interesting to see if the Bobcats are able to try to keep them sustained in that situation. Theodore, right. on the other hand, yeah. Al, you look, can they maintain and sustain success? They had a lot of success a week ago in defeating McGill Tulin. Coach Carrier wanted his team this year, or this week rather, to focus on themselves. All season long, he's not been worried about the opponent, been worried about getting better as Bobcats. We'll see if they're able to maintain and sustain that success. Follow up the Warrior running game. Colby Blunt is a dynamic 1,000-yard rusher. He ran for 1,000 yards one year ago. Right. Has over 1,000 yards again this year. So the ability to get him on the ground tonight is going to be instrumental for this Bobcat defense. And preventing penalties, something that Coach Carrier and this Bobcat team did a good job of last week. Okay. Was preventing those penalties. So not a lot of dirty rags on the field. Carrier wants to see the referees keep those keep the laundry in their pocket. All right, there's Corey's checklist. We'll probably revisit that later on as the game develops. Speaking of developing, back with us tonight, Kimberly Dunn. She took a week off last week, so we had someone else pinch hitting. Let's hit, take it down to the field. Kimberly, welcome back. What's going on on the field tonight? Thank you, thank you. Um, it is a wonderful night for some football. The temperature could not be better. These players really have great playing conditions in order to have a great football game tonight, and I think it's something that is going to benefit both of these teams. And both of these teams are excited about this game tonight. They're not looking at records. They are focused on playing a good, clean game and coming out with a victory. All right, Kimberly, we appreciate that. We'll be checking back in with her as the game develops. Corey, you talked about it. This is a big one coming up tonight, your checklist. We're going to check back throughout the game, maybe see if uh, these teams are fulfilling what they need to do to be successful tonight. And for us tonight, we've got a special treat. We're being shadowed by some of the Davidson broadcast team, some of the students from Davidson. They're following us, so Kimberly has a shadow with her. We have a couple of kids in the truck. And hanging out with us in the booth tonight, we have senior Jaden Ganey. So we may be checking in with Jaden. He does color for the broadcast team for Davidson, Corey. So I know you, uh, you're you going to be giving him some tidbits and uh, listening to him because he's got some inside information on these kids. Well, he walks the halls with the students of Davidson High School, so we look forward to his insights and the tidbits that he's able to bring us tonight. Moments away from kickoff, back to receive Hunter Tillman and Demoy Kennedy for the Bobcats, and of course handling the kicking duties for Davidson. We're quite familiar with this young man. We watched his career blossom. Joe Montano, All-State kicker. Montano lining it up, and he booms that one. Taken by Zach Workman back tonight. I'm sorry, not Workman on that. That is Workman. So Workman filling in for DeMoy Kennedy. A nice run, Corey, but there is some laundry on the turf already on the kickoff. And that's something I know both coaches wanted to stay away from, and I just talked about it earlier in my checklist, especially the Theodore Bobcats. There's going to be a holding right out of the gate off the kickoff by the Bobcats. So here's our first look at referee Rick Johnson and the crew pushing Theodore back a bit. During the return, have holding on the return team. Ten yards from the foul. First down. It'll be first down for the Bobcats at the 17-yard line. Kimberly talked about great weather tonight, 74 degrees, no chance of rain, 57% humidity, and we do have a bit stronger wind out of the north-northeast at 8 miles per hour, but it is absolutely great weather tonight here at the legendary Lab People Stadium. And first and 10 for the Bobcats. And what do they do? They hand it off to their big back, Jimmy Haywood, who goes up the middle for maybe three or four. Yeah, no surprise exactly where Theodore wants to go to their big back, Jimmy Haywood. The 5'9", 190-pound senior gets the first carry of the night. There's our look at the offensive starter. We talked about them. We saw him last week against McGill, Hunter Tillman. He is the Swiss Army knife for them. Keep your eye off of him in the slot. Also, Zach Workman across that front. The line averages 210 pounds, maybe small, but they definitely make up for it with effort and also the big, big guy, Jordan O'Neill, a receiver. We keep a lookout for him all the time. A little quick out to Zach Workman on the flare there, and he's got room up the line. He's going 
to about the 45-yard line. So that's going to be a first down for the Bobcats. Let's take a look at that defense for the Davidson Warriors across the front. They come across with Cedric Johnson, Carnell Sexton playing defensive end tonight. Jalen Harris, he moves up from the linebacker slot. This defense has accounted for 12 touchdowns. They have six interceptions and nine recovered fumbles. So a very active defense for the Davidson Warriors. So keep on the lookout for them. We've had a chance to check them out a couple weeks ago against MGM, Court. Yeah, nice assess there by Theodore on the little swing out pass to Workman. Getting Underwood's confidence early and often. Shamar Lewis, the 5'7", 165-pound senior on the stop. Pitch out to Haywood. He turns the corner across the midfield stripe to about the 49-yard line of the Davidson Warriors and the Theodore Bobcats on the move early. Rashad Kaiser, the safety on the stop. Anytime you're able to get to that second level, as the Bobcats just were, that's productive. A nice tackle to undercut the running back. Second down for the Bobcats. We'll call it short. Maybe second and about three here. They're looking over to the sideline, getting the call in. Now referee Rick Johnson and the crew get the play clock going. So Theodore getting themselves together after that early penalty on the kickoff return from Workman. They have pushed him back 10 yards, but they have made up for it. And there's the other back, the one-two punch of Jimmy Haywood. There's Devontae Washington. And, Corey, that's enough for the first down as Theodore is at the 45-yard line of Davidson. Nice stop by Demetrius Johnson, the linebacker. He's a sophomore. Comes in with 30 tackles on the season. But when you have that one-two punch of Haywood and Devontae Washington, one back is able to get a rest. You're able to bring in another one to move the sticks. And right. now both backs are able to catch their breath as Devontae Washington will stay in the game. They platoon those backs throughout the night as the game unfolds. Theodore in the spread formation there. Underwood looking to connect, does have a receiver out, trying to get it to O'Neal. That ball incomplete. A lot of the Theodore fans thought a flag may have come out, but it did not. Nice look at the replay. Underwood with the play action. Rolls out to his left. Looking for his big wide receiver, Jordan O'Neal. And good defense on the play. You would think that the pass interference call would be made because the defensive player did not turn his head right. in that situation. But the defensive back was not flagged. That defensive back was Reginald Davis the second, And it's going to bring up second down and 10 for the Bobcats. A couple weeks ago, we saw him have an interception against MGM on early in that ball game. But I'm with you there, Corey. He uh, was all in the face of O'Neal, but no flag. So second and 10 for the Bobcats here. O'Neal lined up in the slot once again. They're going to hand that one off. And gutting it out for maybe two or three yards on the carry there. Jimmy Haywood for the Theodore Bobcats. Good stop by Jalen Harris, the defensive end. 6'1", 181-pound senior, is now playing the defensive end position with Eric Bell being out with the injury. Jalen was used to playing his linebacker position, but he has 27 tackles now on the season, one interception and three sacks. He's going to add to his stat total from the defensive end position tonight. Yeah, I'm with you there. He's probably used to doing that moving from that inside linebacker back, back slot, so it shouldn't be a problem. So actually not much forward progress for uh, Haywood on the carry. It's third and nine. Underwood looking to air this one out. Escapes from the pocket and just throws it away as he is knocked out of bounds. So the Davidson Warriors defense holds right there, taking the fourth down, kind of in no man's lands. Let's see if uh, Theodore will punt or if they'll go for it. So it looks like the punting team is coming out there's Hunter Tillman yeah I mean I think that you definitely have to punt this football Seth Tillman will Seth definitely Tillman. he was able to pin the Yellow Jackets within their own one yard line one week ago he's going to try to do the same thing against this Warrior team tonight back to receive Colby Blunt the outstanding running back he stays away from that one so Tillman plants it out at about the 17 maybe 18 yard line so we'll get our first look at the Davidson Warriors tonight as they come on to the field led by Quarterback Tim Johnson, an outstanding running back, Colby Blunt, as he is over a thousand yards once again for a season. Got to thank our folks at Future Ones here for hooking us up with the polos. They've done it all season long, but more so, especially tonight, Corey. It's our last week of awareness. As you notice, we have our pink on tonight, so we're pinking out, but also thanks to Future One for the pink polos. Yeah, Trent Massey and Gus Smith, the innovators. Where the future is what you want to do with Future Ones, have all your game apparel and equipment needs. Hand off to Colby Blunt, as I just mentioned, his second season back-to-back -back over 1,000.
thousand yards. This kid is an outstanding runner, Corey. He is awesome. And that's something that you don't see a lot of. A young man who leads this Davidson Warrior in receiving as well as rushing. It just goes to speak to his versatility as a back and the durability. Has over 165 rushes. Make that 166 now yeah. on the season. So he's definitely the workhorse for this Warrior offensive team. He pretty much is. You're right about that. Second and seven for the Warriors. Tim Johnson decides to keep this one, picks up maybe a yard. Let's take a look at that uh, starting lineup for the Davidson Warriors. Tim Johnson, quarterback there. He's a senior. Just talked about Kobe Blunt. Also, keep your eyes out for Dennis Hamilton, averaging 14.8 yards, a reception to offensive line. A lot of meat on that bone. 249 pounds across the front is the average. And, Corey, you just talked about Kobe Blunt. He's their leading receiver, averaging 16.25 yards of reception. So he is very, very lethal coming out of the backfield on a little flare, a little, little quick outs there as well. Third down and five yards to go for the Davidson Warriors. A very manageable situation here. That pass is incomplete, so it'll take Davidson to third down, and we'll be looking at a punt here coming up from Joe Montano. A little quick look at the defense for Theodore. They pretty much did their job, averaging 211 across the front, and this defense is very stingy. Eight interceptions on the season, five recovered fumbles, and the team has over 27 sacks together. Every person in the secondary has an interception for the Bobcats defense. So very stingy. Corey is number one in Class 7A with 5.1 points scoring defensive average. Yeah, it dropped last week because they only gave up three points to the Yellow Jackets of McGill, and now it's a punting situation for Joe Montano, and he gets an excellent kickoff. Gets it off. Zach Workman back to take that. His second time touching the ball tonight, so Workman gets it up to about the 40-yard line of Davidson. So great field position here for the Bobcats. We know we saw their drive stall at about the 45, maybe 40-yard line, but they didn't give up much ground to Davidson. They're right back where they uh, were on their previous possession there, Corey. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see now if the Bobcats getting through with that first offensive drive that resulted in a punt are able to try to click on all cylinders. We know Underwood has the ability to go to the outside and you would like to see him hit Hunter Tillman in that slot position. That's where they've been very effective also. And off to Devontae Washington, and he has met immediately at the line of scrimmage, brought down by Jalen Harris. That move to defensive end paying off for Coach Sean Smith and the Warriors. So that's going to be a loss for Theodore. It'll make it second and about 11. Good job by this defense of Davidson. Defensive coordinator Kelly Eubanks has only given up 16.4 points per game, but try to get his defense a little confidence earlier getting these stops. Traylon Martin in motion. They fake the jet sweep, but they don't they don't need it. And, Corey, we just talked about him. Jalen Harris in on the sack right there for Underwood. Yeah, and that's a big stop. I mean, again, moving to that defensive end position, you look at him coming from the outside untouched and made sure he cleaned up the quarterback, Tyler Underwood. The wood and dropped him for a tremendous loss. Looks like it's going to be close to third down and 18 yards or 19 yards to go now for the Bobcats. Underwood looking to the sideline to get the call. Justin Ridgeway, the offensive coordinator for the Bobcats. He's got to dial up something right here, Corey. It is third and long, as you just mentioned. I'll go with that third and 18, and we have a timeout right now on the field. Well, the officials time out. They're trying to get the play clock going. That's what it is. Maybe they can get that reset there. I believe there we are. We are. So third about 18 here for the Bobcats. A situation to where here they're able to go to the Zach Workman or Hunter Tillman and have a lot of success. Right. But I, I like the running ability also that you're seeing right now, Al. There it is, Justin Haywood. They get a lot of those yards back, but it's enough to take the pressure off. Gets it up to about the 40-yard line, so it'll be fourth and about five, maybe six yards. And we're going to see our Seth Tillman, second appearance for Seth Tillman tonight here in this contest. Nice draw play by the Bobcats to try to pick up half of that yardage, which they're able to do. Again, Tillman looked like he's punting from almost the exact same position that he punted from earlier. You're right. I agree with you on that. Trying to pin it in the corner over there. 
kind of puts a bit of a draw on it. So it's going to go out as the officials come up to about the 19-yard line. So Davidson will get their second possession. So, Corey, what do you have to say? Both teams kind of somewhat maybe feeling each other out right here with these first two possessions. That's exactly what's going on now. Both teams have done their homework. And or really the defenses are what's leading these teams because we mentioned earlier Davidson coming off of back-to-back -back shutouts, lowering their overall scoring uh, percentage. And you know Theodore's defense has three shutouts this season, so both teams are really defensively stout. So, again, it's going to be who's going to bend and not break. And off to Kobe Blunt, picking his way through that Bobcat defense, a nice about eight or nine-yard gain. Davidson comes into the ball game tonight, averaging 19.3 points a contest giving up just 16.4 so far doing pretty good as we under five minutes here in the first quarter colton higgins the 6'1 194 pound senior sam linebacker makes the tackle on the play for the bobcats but second down and one yard to go for the warriors is definitely a situation to where tim johnson has an opportunity for the quarterback keeper or give it to that dynamic big back in colby blunt they hand it off to blunt to go with the high percentage Notice he'd kind of go to the ground, but he sticks the uh, pigskin out there, Corey. So that appears as, a, as if it is enough for a first down. We shall see. But I think he is a bit short. So it's third down, third and short here. Maybe a yard possibly for the Warriors as you get a good look right there. Tim Johnson looking to the sideline to get the call here. We know their bread and butter is pretty much the running game. Johnson's only thrown for two touchdowns this season. He's a 43% completion percentage. They don't throw it very often at Davidson, but when they do, they try to connect. Back to Blunt again. I don't think he got it, Al. That's going to be close. I don't know if he had enough for forward progress. We saw the chain game come out once last week to measure for Theodore McGill, but I think he's short from our vantage point a top last stadium core no movement on that offensive line mm -hmm. uh, by the Davidson Warriors and the Bobcats did a wonderful job of making sure the big guys Mike Washington Ephraim Boykin and Jeremiah Hester out of that 3-4 defense of Ham Barnett made sure that they didn't get any yardage and they loaded the line of scrimmage and weren't able to get that yard fourth and short right here interesting formation I believe the Warriors, Warriors are probably going to spread out and there they go Joe Montano, and a flag comes out. Did they get the Bobcats to jump? And I believe they may have because the Warriors are excited as they run to the sidelines. There might have been a hard count that was given earlier as the formation was getting ready to spread, which did cause the Bobcats to move. And if it did, it's a free first down. Right. Prior to the snap, encroachment, defense, five yards, first down. So well, there's the free five, as you can see the excitement from Sean Smith giving a high five to the players. Referee Rick Johnson, his crew tonight, John Burnett, the third, Anthony Garrett, Jason Slade, William Crabtree, Chip Mayhall, and Kevin Duhon. They're going to be handling the action tonight here at Ladd Stadium. So first and ten for Davidson, hand off to Blunt, and he's met by a wall of Bobcats, but by primarily a guy we know firsthand, Demoy Kennedy, Corey, all over him. I know you had an opportunity to see DeMoy Kennedy up close and personal, but he's such a dynamic linebacker. Comes from that jack position, 6'2", 190-pound junior, has verbally committed to play for the Auburn Tigers, but you see right there the speed that he has yeah. coming down the line of scrimmage and tackling Blunt for that loss. So at second and about 12 for the Warriors, taking a loss on that play right there. Johnson has room. He's going to roll out and keep this. This little RPO gets a block from Colby Blunt, but can't quite turn the corner, but he picks up maybe three or four on the care. Tim Johnson, the quarterback, the 5'9", 153-pound senior, directing traffic as we take a look at the replay. <laughs> he rolls out to his left and kind of pushes Colby Blunt out in front of him, and a great block by Colby, helping yep. out his teammates, trying to gain those additional yards. Going to bring up third down and eight yards to go for the Davidson Warriors. Very quick first quarter here. We're going to have to get our man Jaden Ganey on, get some comments from him. He attends Davidson with these kids, so get an idea of what uh, it goes into his broadcast and maybe in some of the mindset of some of the Warriors as they prepare for the game this week. Blunt just bounces off the tackle. He's got room, Corey. Bounce off to Moy Kennedy, 
That's enough for the first down as Colby Blunt gets near the midfield strike. That's huge on third down and eight. Jamil Richardson, the free safety for the Bobcats, makes the stop. And as soon as Blunt gets past the line of scrimmage, he just lowers those shoulders and nose and stiff arms and continues to gain positive yards. That's something that concerned Coach Collier, finding a way to get Blunt on the ground. And if you're not able to do that, get him behind the line of scrimmage. He has such strength right. at 5'7", 165 pounds. He plays like he's six foot one. 200 pounds the way he runs the football and that big line he runs behind averaging 249 across the front you got to respect his legs you got to respect his game when blunt is out on the field and they bring in the backup with the run right there big run for jonathan winfield i'm sorry jonathan whitfield as he picks up the first down and gets close to the red zone for the warriors you look at the replay a great push on the left side it's just a blown coverage by the bobcat defense and a good design by the Warriors offense. Offensive coordinator Kim Boatman calling and pushing all the right buttons for this Warrior offense right now. First down ball at the 39-yard line. They give it back to Whitfield. He's trying to escape, but he cannot. Wrapping him up, Demoy Kennedy on the tackle. So Davidson's going to take a loss there, take them to second down. Good stop by the Bobcats. Now putting the Warriors behind the chain on second down. And the Warriors don't throw the ball a lot. Again, they want to ground and pound first. They right. pass the ball when necessary. We saw our earlier pass to the tight end Jerquan Scott go incomplete. That's the biggest aspect of Tim Johnson's game that he wants to continue to work on. Stoppage in play right now. Here's if a timeout has been called. The Bobcats ran over to the sideline. No timeout, course. I don't know if maybe the play clock's acting up again or what, but Theodore ran to the sideline as if it was a timeout call. Yeah, it looks like the play clock is giving them problems on the field because I don't see it running at this not point Not running, but the game clock is running, and we're close to ending the first quarter, and the play clock has not even started yet. So there does appear to be some issues going on. Let's see if we will end the quarter or not. We're going to find out on the other side. So that does look like that's the end of the first quarter. We'll be back with second quarter action. We're all notched up at zero with Theodore and Davidson. Don't move. It's the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. At Mobile County Public Schools, we believe it starts with us. That's why we offer Signature Academies. Hello, I'm Jordan Clark, and I'm in the Health Service Academy at John L. LaFleur Magnet High School. My future career is to be an obstetrician gynecologist. With this academy, I'm learning firsthand from people already working in the industry. Shadowing them on the job really makes me want to study hard and work harder towards my career goals. Signature Academies are open to all students in Mobile County Public High Schools. Visit mcpss.com. As Alabama's first and largest school system, Mobile County Public Schools prides itself on the high quality of education we provide our students. We have been successful over the years in raising our graduation rates. And have been recognized nationally for closing achievement gaps. We believe that our primary focus is to educate all students to become productive citizens. This is our commitment to them and to you. Welcome back to the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. It's 0-0, Theodore and Davidson. I'm Al Whedon, joined by Coralie Bounty. Down on the sidelines, Kimberly Dunn, and she has a special guest with her. What's going on, Kim? I do have a special guest. I am here with Davidson's principal, Mr. Richardson. How are you doing this evening? Doing great. It's a great evening. It is. So tell us a little bit about what's going on at Davidson and maybe even about your signature academies. There's a lot of good things going on right now. We just had um, another student make a 36 on the ACT. That's our wow. third one in this class and our fourth one in the last couple years. So there's a lot of good things going on. Nice. So what are some of the signature academies that Davidson has to offer? We have our Epic Academy, which is, uh, includes engineering, biomedical, and computer science. And we had the uh, Signature Academy Showcase this week, and we had a lot of people come out. We have our eighth grade, our eighth grade preview coming up November 4th, and that's at Davidson. So for some of our parents that may be watching, why should they choose to send their child to Davidson High School? Well, we've got a, a, a lot of good things going on at Davidson, great teachers, a, a devoted staff, a lot of good students. 
and it's just a family. You know, it's it's big enough to be a, a big school, but it's also small enough where you know everyone, so it, it, it's a good family atmosphere. Yes. So now I know that you just came from a vice principal position here at Davidson. Has there been any difference moving from that now to the principal position? It's been a lot different, a lot different. Uh, it's a, a new office, and with that office comes a lot more responsibility. Um, but I, I found my way through it. It was a quick first quarter, but, um, you know, I'm finding my way and uh, figuring things out. All right. Well, I'll let you get back to the game in just a minute. But what are some changes that you may have in store for these Davidson Warriors and for the students in general? Well, we, we've started having um, Dress for Success Wednesday. We get all the students and teachers to dress up and dress professionally. We have also have uh, we're, they're installing a new marquee this week in front of the school, and we have a security guard in the parking lot. So there's a lot of little subtle differences. Uh, Mr. Copeland laid a great foundation, and we're going the same direction, just kind of some subtle changes, just tightening things up a little bit. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for taking your time and speaking with us tonight. Thank you very much. All right. Good luck to you. Thank you, Kimberly, on that position. Davison can't take advantage, Corey. They have to end up punting, so Theodore gets the ball back. Yeah, that's a big stop right there. And you look at this situation now for the Bobcats. I really look for them on this drive to kind of figure things out and start moving the chains a little bit because what you want to try to do is methodically march down the field. If you have to do it the old school way, running the football or have some play action opportunities, bottom line is you just want to get first downs and right. the Theodore Bobcats. You want to keep that defense off of the field because so far Davidson has probably been equally matched, probably time of possession, seven minutes to five in favor of the Davidson Warriors in the first quarter. Second down and about seven here for the Bobcats. Receivers at the bottom, they're going to hand this off. Jimmy Haywood trying to escape from the Warriors, and they are wrapping him up. Maybe gets one or two on the carry. It'll take Theodore to third down. And it's a situation to where Tyler Underwood is going to have to find his wide receivers. The mismatch was there early on the swing out pass to Zach Workman, but Hunter Tillman has not had a ball thrown his way yet, nor has Traylon Martin, and we saw them have a lot of success one week ago against the McGill Tooley Yellow Jackets catching and receiving the football. Third and five here for Theodore. Haywood in the backfield with Underwood, and he gets a complete to Hunter Tillman. That's enough for the first down up to about the 41-yard line, our first time calling on Tillman and him touching the uh, ball tonight. And you look at the replay, Underwood drops back and finds Hunter Tillman. Hunter Tillman's 5'8", 175-pound senior, has 22 receptions on the season with four touchdowns. Also can rush the football coming across on the jet sweep. So that's a big completion for Underwood and the ball, uh, Bobcats. Trips at the bottom of the screen, and they give it off to Devontae Washington, who picks up two or three up to about the 45-yard line. That one-two punch of Washington and Haywood, they're successful, both of them averaging pretty much over five yards a carry for the Bobcats this season. Demetrius Johnson, the linebacker, the sophomore linebacker, gets the stop for the Davidson Warriors. Again, they're playing this 3-4 defense and trying to find a way to make sure the Bobcats' offensive line is not getting a tremendous push at the line of scrimmage. Second and six is what Ladd is calling it here. Washington still in the ball game, barrels his way up the middle for about a six-yard gain, so that's going to be a first down again as Theodore trying to keep success going and keep the drive alive here in the second quarter. Just great power running, lowering his head was Devontae Washington, and, and it looks like there's going to be an official measurement, uh, official timeout for the measurement on this call. I think he might have got it by the nose of the football, but nice power running behind the offensive line of Trey Owens, Desmond Ford, and Cole Payne. We haven't seen very many measurements this season, Corey, so we had one last week. I think if he gets it, it's by the nose, as you said, but it wouldn't surprise me if they're a bit short, but I believe they're going to have it. Great There it shot. is. Great shot by the crew there. So first down for the theater of Bobcats still on the move just past the midfield stripe. And that's exactly what the Bobcat offense coordinator Justin Ridgeway dialed up. A couple of first downs here 
in the middle of the second quarter to get your offense and get your rhythm going. You look for Tyler Underwood to drop back. Again, if you're having success running the football with Haywood and Washington, that play action can be vital because this Davidson Warrior defense has been susceptible to the deep ball. And off to Jimmy Haywood, he's got some room near the numbers, and he's going to pretty much carry that one for about a 10 or 11-yard gain. So that's another first down for the Bobcats. You have to give credit where credit is due. You look at Kevin Dennis, Colby Kyles, Cole Payne, Trey Owens, Desmond Ford, and Jacob Johnston pushing that offensive line forward to make those holes available to Devontae, and Devontae is hitting him full speed ahead, and now Jimmy Haywood, with his fresh legs, checks back in to the contest. Play action for the Bobcats. Underwood trying to escape the pocket and cannot, could not get rid of it, so we could call that one a coverage sack for the Warriors as they wrap him up and Underwood takes a big loss. You look at the pressure, Reginald Davis the second comes up huge as well as Demetrius Johnson pressuring the quarterback and Underwood did a good job of understanding that he needed to eat that football not right. get called for the intentional grounding which would have been a loss of down as well as cost him the yardage so now it's going to bring up second down and close to 23 yards to go for the Bobcats, and this is where you get your wide receivers involved. After last time we saw them in second and long, we saw them go to the draw. And they go back to it, Jimmy Haywood. But he cannot escape the Warriors as they, as they are all over him. Shamar Lewis wraps him up. And that's going to take Davidson, I'm sorry, Theodore, to third down, third and steal long, Corey. Being very active are the linebackers for the Davidson Warriors, and that's a plus because they're having an opportunity to fill those gaps in the holes and get into the backfield and disrupt the continuity of the Bobcats offense. Probably about third and 22, third and 23. That's what Ladd is calling it here. Looks like some movement going on, and there's a flag coming in. Don't know if this is a false start or offsides, but that was definitely some early movement on both parts. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, five yards, we play third down. So that'll push the Bobcats back, make it third and 28. Earlier in the first quarter, we saw a long third down for Theodore, and they went with a close draw play to Jimmy Haywood. He picked up a very significant gain. It kind of got him out of the hole. It wasn't the first down, but uh, at least it gave uh, – Seth Tillman some room to punt there for him, Corey. Davis is doing a good job defensively trying to make sure none of these wide receivers get behind them. They're going to give up the short passing yardage to Zach Workman, a great open field tackle by the Davidson Warriors defense and James Atkins. That little quick screen goes nowhere, so we'll get to see Seth Tillman once again. Young man I got to see yesterday and also Des Moines Kennedy. They're named as Crichton Optimus Club Players of the Week, so we'll try to get some information up. This is our third punt from uh, Seth Tillman tonight already. Nice punt by Tillman right there. And Blunt's just going to let it die, and so Theodore is going to feel that about the 15-yard line. Let's take a look at the impact players for both of these teams tonight, Corey. We've had a good look at them. So for Davidson, who do you have tonight? Definitely the kicker, Joe Montano. He's a difference maker. Has made a 50-yard field goal so far this year. And Colby Blunt, we mentioned that he leads this Warrior offense in receiving as well as rushing. We've seen him have a couple of big runs so far tonight. Now for the flip side, for Theodore, who do you have as your impact player? For them. Cameron Brown, the defensive back who was selected to play in the Alabama Mississippi All Star game from his senior strong safety position. We saw him with the interception late last sure week did. against sure the Yellow did. Jackets and also quarterback Tyler Underwood for the Bobcats. That was your impact players for the game tonight. One you just talked about, Kobe Blunt goes to the middle and takes it back outside and you can see the strength that he has in his legs but also between the ears knowing to bounce outside to get some more yards there Corey. Does a good job of picking up yards after contact and who comes and tackles them none other than strong safety Cam Brown one of our impact players. Kobe Blunt has shiftiness is able to get it on the inside bounce it back to the outside when there's nothing there and again a great tackle made by the Bobcats 
And excuse me, on that tackle for the Bobcats was number eight, Michael Williams. I'll give credit where credit is due coming from his <laughs> linebacker position and making that tackle. Second and short here for the Warriors, and Blunt on the move, picks up the first down and gingerly steps out of bounds at maybe about the 35-yard line. Take a look at some of the scores from last week involving Mobile County Public Schools. There we are. Theodore all over McGill last week. Big game, 15-3. to Davidson got the shutout over Murphy, as we know. Baker over Bryant, 37-7. Viger blanks Faith Academy, 41-0. It was blunt over Gulf Shores. That was a Thursday night game, 32-22. to And that ball comes out of Tim Johnson's hand on the ground as a fumble, Corey. And we have our first turnover of the ball game. Jaden McCants, the defensive end, 5'10", 195-pound junior. With the fumble recovery, I do believe, for the Bobcats. And it just was a, not a clean exchange between quarterback Tim Johnson and Colby Blunt. And because of it, Jaden McCants pounces on the ball, and the Bobcats are going to have their best field position of the night thus far. Theodore is yet to get into the red zone, but right now they are close to it with the ball at the 30-yard line. And I'm with you, Kerr. I got to. Flip my flip chart over here is Tyler Underwood and the Bobcats back on the field right quick. Devontae Washington, look at him just picking and weaving his way through the Warriors defense for about a seven, eight yard run. Jason Williams, the 5'8", 152-pound senior from his safety position, makes his 35th tackle on the season and slings the runner down to the ground, but it's going to bring up second down and two yards to go for the Bobcats. Coming up at halftime, we'll take a look at the bands. Also, we're going to have our return of the Chick-fil-A halftime trivia challenge. Let Kimberly Dan Gun Dunn go up into the stands, get a spectator, and try to get them hooked up with a Chick-fil-A prospect. So stick around for that at halftime. Plus more, Zach Workman on the jet sweep. And, Corey, he picks up the first down as he gets into the red zone, but I do see some yellow laundry on the field. Yeah, Zach Workman had six rushes for 70 yards and two touchdowns on the season. So he's also an efficient runner on those jet sweeps. And as we take a look at the replay, he does come from his jet sweep, and we see the flag thrown early. Looks like it's going to back the Bobcats up. Possibly looking like a hold coming up here. As the officials discuss it, Rick Johnson and the crew trying to get the right call, but the body language tends to uh, say it might be a hold. We'll see. Here's the call here. So apparently two holes on the Blake Corey, so one decline and one is accepted. And you go from second down Holding. and two. On the offense, 10 yards from spot of the foul, replay second down. Second down and two to second down and 15. Yeah, yeah. That's a big difference in your play call. And, and again, we mentioned that the Bobcats just had their best field position of the night and want to try to capitalize on that. Bobcats going backwards right here. Early score coming in tonight. Also some action at Pritchard Municipal Stadium. Satsuma over the floor right now, 6-0 to zero in the second quarter. And we are scoreless here at Lab People Stadium. Tyler Underwood trying to change that, going over the middle to Zach Workman. Is that a completed pass? The officials coming up from the side. Well, so now, now officially called incomplete. And if we're able to have an opportunity to look at this replay, you see the pressure that is being brought by this Davidson Warrior defense. And as Underwood steps in to throw it, he's absolutely rocked by the defensive back who came on the delayed blitz, and it's going to bring up a third down and 14 yards to go. James Atkins came on the blitz and yeah. brought the pressure for the Warriors. That pass incomplete, and they are all over Underwood, but he gets it away and cannot get it out to Jordan O'Neill. We know Jordan O'Neill is 6'5". Corey, I think that pass may have been 10, 10 feet in the air. Just didn't have an opportunity to step into it. Jordan O'Neill from his wide receiver position was wide open, but if your quarterback cannot step into his throw, he's going to be ineffective every time. And so far in this first half, defensive coordinator Kelly Eubanks and his Davidson Warrior defense have done an outstanding job of putting the pressure 
on Tyler Underwood. Seth Tillman, he was our pigskin player of the game last week. He puts that one into the end zone for a touchback. Take it down to the sidelines right now. So instead of Kimberly Dunn, we have Kyla Thomas. She's going to be handling some sideline duties. What's going on, Kyla? Hi, on the side of me, I have Jackson Crab. Jackson, how long have you been doing broadcast for Davidson? Uh, this is will be my second year. Uh, I plan on doing it throughout my time at Davidson. I've really enjoyed it. With you being out here tonight, how do you feel about all of this? Uh, I've had a great time working with Mobile County. I've got to see a lot of things that we don't get the opportunity to do. Uh, I think it's a really good opportunity to see uh, an actual professional broadcast. Seeing that they have different things and different way of operating, is there anything you're going to take back for our next broadcast? Uh, I'll definitely take a lot of things back, a lot of little points and tips and things I've seen. Um, I've really enjoyed it, and I've learned a lot. Okay, what is one of your favorite things about being able to do a broadcast? Well, I love coming out here on Friday nights. Uh, I, I get in the game for free, which is awesome. I get to watch some football. Uh, I just really enjoy it all around. It's a great experience. I want to thank you, but I'm going to take it right back up to you guys in the booth. Thank you. Great job, Kayla. Great job. She had her questions together, Corey. She was on point. Everything was timely and uh, came together quite nice. It did. I mean, you look at the hard work that the students put in as they watch us prepare, and I just like the fact that they're young sponges and willing right. to absorb some of the knowledge that we're being able to share with them. Yeah, as the young man was talking, Jackson was talking. Nice big run from Kobe Blunt picking up a couple first downs for the Warriors. We got to get our man Jaden Ganey over here on the mic, get him mic'd up, and uh, get some comments from him as we're nearing halftime to get his viewpoints because he's here in the booth with us, Corey. And uh, we kind of got him doing some stats right now, helping us out as well. Doing a great job of those stats. I was able to glance over at him in the first quarter. And again, this is such a quickly played contest here at Ladd. Not a lot of penalties, just a lot of running. And the, the Warriors continue to run the football as Jonathan Whitfield gets the carry. The 21, Jonathan Whitfield on the carry for the Warriors. Daniel Warren on the play, third down and six, upcoming. Second and about seven here for the Warriors. I'm sorry, third down. Third down and about seven for the Warriors. Decision time here, play clock. Approaching 10 seconds. I wonder if uh, Coach Sean Smith is going to call timeout and discuss some things. Coming up at halftime, the Chick-fil-A halftime trivia challenge. Kimberly Dunn will step into the stands and try to get a spectator. Ask them a question or two. If they answer it correctly, get them hooked up with a Chick-fil-A prospect. So stick around for that. Kimberly Dunn with the Chick-fil-A halftime trivia challenge as Davidson takes a timeout right here with one minute and 19 seconds remaining in the first half, Corey. Yeah, 0-0 zero, zero our score. Really didn't expect it. there not to be any offensive production on the board, but both teams have been able to move the ball in between the 30s and then kind of stall out. You saw the Bobcats get their best field position of the game and then had to go backwards due to penalties, and that's something I know they want to stay away from. Let's get our man Jaden Ganey in here, Corey. Give us a little voiceover work with us. Jaden, come on, step on in the middle here, brother. You're kind of doing some stats for us, but also you know a lot about the Davidson Warriors as you are a senior. As you're a senior for the uh, Davidson Warriors, you're on the broadcast team. So uh, tell us what are your viewpoints right here of the Warriors and what you're seeing tonight so far. Uh, absolutely, you know. The defense is working very phenomenal tonight. You know, it's a high-powered defense. You know, the likes of Jalen Harris and Jason Williams really leading that defense on the senior end of it. Okay. You know, the offense is really working well. Colby Blunt getting some big gains. And, you know, even if Colby Blunt's not in, you have the sophomore John the Whitfield producing runs. You know, there's talk about him being even better than Colby Blunt, which okay. is uh, it's phenomenal to think that this team could produce so many offensive yards against an undefeated region team that produced a phenomenal game against McGill last week. Right, right. You know, if you watched the Davidson game last week, their defense was outstanding with only allowing 69 yards that game and not even allowing them past the 50 in the second half. So I, the whole the whole Davidson defense is ready for this game. So, Tim, when you've been up here with Corey and I, you're kind of reviewing some stats and going over some stats. When you're doing your broadcast as the color guy, how do you kind of prepare to get yourself together for a contest? You know, AL.com is a great resource to use. Uh, they're multifaceted resource guys. They produce – phenomenal information that I can't produce. But I, and then I ask, you know, I have to ask Colby and Tim, 
because, you know, they, they play on the team. Okay. They get insight from Coach Sean Smith. They get insight from Coach Eubanks, you know, Coach Ag. They have all the coordinators at their hand. So I asked him, hey, what are you thinking this week? Gotcha. And uh, Tim Johnson, actually, this week, I asked him, and he said, intensity. They can't play half a game. They can't play a quarter of a game. They have to play four quarters of a great football against this, this great Theodore team. Yeah. And uh, Coley Blunt said the same thing. You know, they're, uh, they're echoes of each other. You know, Tim Johnson's the, the outspoken leader, and Coley Blunt's the, the lead-by-example kind of guy. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Well, you know these guys personally. You're seeing them uh, at school, but you also get to comment on them doing the ball game. So that's got to be a pretty good experience for you. Oh, absolutely. It's, uh, it's a great thing to come out here every Thursday or Friday night and just, you know, commentate on my friends that I can see every day. You know, <laughs> I my, gotcha. Some of my teammates, and it's just it's, – it's wonderful. It's an experience that uh, – it's an experience that I wish I had an experience every night. Well, no problem, Jay. We appreciate also handling stats for us as well, man. All right, Corey, we're about to get to the uh, halftime here. 34 seconds remaining, and Davidson looking to punt here, not able to capitalize as this drive come, is stalled. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be close to our seventh punt of yeah. the contest by either team, not by both teams, well, by both teams combined. And 24 seconds left to go in the second quarter. If you were to tell me that we would be knotted at zero to zero, I would tell you that that probably would not be the score I'm with you at there. halftime. Right, I would right. say, okay, yeah, you're going to kick off and it's going to be zero to zero. But the punters have definitely got their money's worth tonight. The specialists are going to be busy and, it's going to be interesting to see at halftime what both coaches say and what adjustments are made by both teams because Theodore has really struggled throwing the football tonight they for have. whatever reason. And I say for whatever reason, that's due to the pressure of this Davidson Warrior defense. So Theodore are lining up pretty much here in the victory formation to take a knee as we go into the locker room. And, Corey, I'm with you. Absolutely surprised. Zero to zero at the end of two quarters of action tonight not much stats to talk about but if you do you just mentioned it it's pretty much the punting of seth tillman and all state punter joe montano for the warriors yeah that's the difference in this first half are the punters they're the ones who have gotten the most work and zero to zero game it's been a field battle both teams have kind of struggled offensively you look at the total yardage right. a lot of rushing yards for the davidson warriors because yeah. of colby blunt and his ability to run the football on the flip side of that the bobcats had good field position due to the turnover but weren't able to produce any points and really any yardage out of the drive in which they took over on the warriors 30 line 30 yard line right right and that penalty pushed them back because they had an opportunity to keep going but uh, kind of shot themselves in the foot. Let's take it down to the sideline. Kimberly Dunn has Davidson head coach Sean Smith. Coach, how do you feel about your team's performance so far tonight? Um, <laughs> pretty good. You know, a, a defensive struggle. It's been a while since we've been in a game quite like this, um, which reminds me of a, a game that we would have played a few years uh, a few years in the past. But, you know, overall pretty pleased. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got to do a better job of um, on the – on the offensive side, just and not even just scoring, just getting some more first downs and changing field position. I mean, they had the ball on our end of the field a lot. We talked about that before the yes, game and said field position, and we didn't do a very good job of that. So hopefully we can fix that. Yeah, so what does your team need to do to stay motivated for this game, and what are you going to say to them in the locker room to help aid that? Well, if I have to say anything to, to keep them motivated, then we've got a problem. <laughs> um, I, I, I think they'll be fine. We've got to come out. You know, play hard. Lot, lots of energy. We don't like we don't like to talk about emotion. It, it's about energy. Yeah. Playing with energy, coming out and getting after it. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll let you get with your team, Coach. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Kimberly. We appreciate that. All right, Coach Smith. He's got some things to work on, as does Coach Collier as well, Corey. So we're going to come back, have halftime here. We'll come back and take a look at the bands and also the Chick Fil A halftime trivia challenge. It's zero zero, Theodore and Davidson. Don't worry, I'm sure we'll get some points in the second half. Don't move, halftime's on the way. I believe my child's school is um, probably one of the best ones I could have picked in Mobile. She's in the PACE program, the teachers are phenomenal, the principal uh, couldn't ask for a better principal. The research that I had done myself, I believe the quality of education in Mobile County public school system is excellent. For me and my child, I'm going to stick with the public school system. I think it's the way to go. 
Hello, I'm Helena Tyler. I would like to invite you to join me for Inside Education. Come with us as we take a look at what's happening around Mobile County Public Schools, as well as what's happening in your child's classroom. That's Inside Education, right here on the MCPSS TV Network. It's halftime for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Let's take it down to the field and enjoy the sounds of the Theodore High School Marching Band.
the sounds of the Theodore High School marching band as they come off the field. We'll be back with more action. As a matter of fact, we're going to come back and try to get a winner with the Chick-fil-A Halftime Trivia Challenge. Don't move. It's halftime for the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. Diesel is a very big industry, and uh, I went into it in a two-year program at the Bryant Career Tech with Tony Tenney. When Jake graduated from the Bryant Career Center, he had earned his diesel credential. The Career Tech Center taught me a lot, but all the way from not knowing anything about a motor or engine to knowing pretty much every single moving part of them. MCPSS Career Tech. Start your future today. Welcome back to the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. It's a time I always look forward to. Chick-fil-A Halftime Trivia Challenge. Let's take it down to the field and check in with Kimberly Dunn. The Davidson High School Band, the Sound of Mobile. We are here with our Chick-fil-A Halftime Trivia Challenge, and I have someone wonderful from our Davidson student section who is going to be doing it. This is Summer Brown. How are you doing tonight, Summer? I'm doing really great today. Good, good. So you're a senior here at Davidson. Can you tell us a little bit about maybe where you want to go to college and what you want to major in? All right, so um, I want to major in criminal justice as a prosecutor, and I'm going to be attending Dillard University next year. So. Exciting, exciting. And you're actually a mid-year graduate, so you will be graduating in just a few months in December, right? Yes, I am so excited. 2019. I'm so excited. <laughs> yes, so she is doing our Chick-fil-A Trivia Challenge to win our wonderful Chick-fil-A prize pack. This has a whole bunch of goodies in it, including some Chick-fil-A gift cards, a cup from the Mobile County Public School System, some nice shades, you know, everything that you could possibly need from Chick-fil-A. Are you ready for the question now? I am. All right. So the question is, which former Hollywood star later went on to become the 40th president of the United States? And we're in luck, so it's multiple choice, okay? So it was either A, Tom Cruise, B, Bill Clinton, C, Ronald Reagan, or D, John F. Kennedy. So have you been, like, kind of mulling it over? Who do you think it is? Okay, well, I definitely know it's not John F. Kennedy because... You know, he got shot. Rest in peace. Um, I'm going to have to say Ronald Reagan. You are correct. It is Ronald Reagan. Great job, great job. So you win our Chick-fil-A prize pack trivia challenge. Thank you so much for talking with us, Summer, and I wish you all the best in your upcoming graduation. Thank you so much. I want to give a big shout-out to all the Warriors tonight. Woo! And good luck on the game tonight. Yes, good luck to y'all. Great job, Kimberly, and great job, Summer. Shouting out to all the Warriors. Speaking of the Warriors, let's take it down to the field. Enjoy the sound of Mobile. It's the Davidson Warriors marching band.
the sound of Mobile, the Davidson High School marching band, giving you sounds here at halftime of the MCPSS High School football game of the week. We'll be back with more halftime action. Don't move. Experience the fear for another year. <laughs> Alan Bryant's baseball hunted trail is back to terror. October 19th and 20th, 26th and 27th, and 29th through 31st. Open from dusk until the last scream is heard. Cost $8 per person. So prepare yourself for an extreme scream. Located behind the baseball field house. It's not for the weekend. As a student in the Mobile County Public Schools, there are a few things I've come to expect. One is a quality education, and the other is a quality lunch. Not only are our school meals well balanced, meeting all federal nutritional standards, but they also have less fat, fewer calories, and they taste really good. Oh, and I forgot to mention, our school lunches contain whole wheat, grains, fruits, and vegetables to give me the energy and brain power to get me through the day. Welcome back to the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. It is halftime at Lab People Stadium. Right now, we're going to take a break and show how you can get involved and help out your community through the United Way. Coming up is a way that you can help out the community more through the United Way. The United Way of Southwest Alabama fights for the health, education, financial stability, and access to life's basic essentials for every person in every community we serve in Choctaw, Clark, Mobile, and Washington counties. Our work is fueled by the passions of our volunteers and donors who give generously of their time, their money, and their voices to improve the lives of others. We all benefit when more people are able to access quality, affordable health care. When a child succeeds in school, when someone finds a job that will help them provide for their families, or when someone doesn't have to choose between paying bills or paying for food. Individuals cannot succeed without life's basic essentials. We fight to end hunger. We fight homelessness. We fight to provide immediate and basic needs for members of our community. In times of crisis, personal challenge. United we fight. United we win. Live united. Education is crucial for brighter, more secure futures. We fight for kindergarten readiness. We fight for reading and math proficiency for all students. We fight to ensure that every student graduates from high school. We fight for college and career readiness. United, we fight. United, we win. The health and resilience of our community is dependent on our citizens and their ability to access quality health care. We fight to promote healthy behaviors. We fight for access to quality health care and prescription drugs. We fight to promote access to addiction, behavior, and mental health counseling. United we fight. United we win. Live united. For communities to thrive, people need to be able to find decent jobs, provide for their families, and save for the future. We fight to help families get on solid financial ground. We fight to provide the tools for success. We fight so that families can plan for the future. United we fight. United we win. Live united. To have strong and stable communities, families within those communities must be strong and stable. This requires a quality education, good health, financial stability, and access to life's basic essential needs. These are the building blocks for a better community. We are addressing the issues that are too hard to face and too hard to ignore. We rise or fall together. With your support, we are reaching for great new heights. United we fight. United we win. We have one life. To live better, we must live united. Please join the fight. Give, volunteer, advocate. Live United. Great job by our team producing that video for United Way. Remember, you can give and help out your community. We're going to come back and do some first half stats. Don't move. Halftime is about to wrap up with the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week.
Mobile County Public Schools, we believe it starts with us. That's why we offer Signature Academies. I'm Tracy Tran, and I'm in the Healthcare and Dental Academy at Theodore High School. In the Dental Academy, I'm working alongside dental professionals getting hands-on training from those already working in the industry. Shadowing them on the job makes me want to work even harder because now I know what I want to be. Signature Academies are open to all students in Mobile County Public High Schools. To find out more, visit mcpss.com. When parents are involved in school, they get more of this and less of this. Welcome back to the MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. I'm here with Jaden, our student athlete who's working with us this evening, has our halftime statistics. I'm going to talk to him a little bit about what he's been charting for us here in the first half. Done an outstanding job. We've had a lot of punts. And talk about how many punts you've seen Davidson have versus how many you've seen Theodore have. Well, I think Theodore having the first uh, drive of the game really led to more punts by them. I think it was a 4-2 punt split, um, six punts overall for both teams. It's just a lot of defensive game. Uh, a bunch of sacks this half. Uh, I think two from Jalen Harris. You know, the defensive end is really getting to the ball, ball hawking the quarterback, and it's a really high defensive game. When you look at the situation for the Davidson Warriors, we knew Colby Blunt had to be very efficient in running the football. Talk about him running the football in the first half. Well, he's had some uh, pretty good five, six-yard run plays, a couple of explosive runs, but, you know, the defense is really working for Theodore, and they're getting the ball. They're not letting him have those 80, 90-yard touchdown runs we usually see him have. Which is, it's good for Theodore. Uh, Tim Johnson just really needs to show up, really needs to pass the ball. And uh, I think Davis can win this right now. We're talking about completions by the Theodore Bobcats. I think you mentioned Theodore only has four completions in the first half or even four pass attempts versus the Davidson Warriors having two. You just spoke on Tim Johnson, the Davidson Warrior quarterback. I think Davidson has to have success throwing the football here in the second half and not just rely on Colby as well. Absolutely. You know, um, Davidson's just. Davis and Tim Johnson is really working pretty well. Um, he's he's doing what he's doing, but he just needs to have, find more passing opportunities and more passing completions. And uh, the quarterback for Theodore is also doing a good job, but a little couple overthrows here and there. We saw a, a key overthrow in what was like third and 16, a key overthrow, and, um, you know, the passing game is really going to have to step up for both teams in order to get the win. Well, Jaden, just want to thank you for all that you've done for us here in the first half and just love your passion to learn more about what we're doing here on the MCPSS Television Network. Thank you. We'll be back right here to second half action. We're going to stay here and join Al Whedon. Al Whedon is going to come in and talk to us a little bit more about what he's seen in the first half. Really no surprises, Al, as you take a look at my checklist. Yeah. Davidson was able to put pressure on Theodore's quarterback, and that being Mr. Underwood, and have also found good field position and have been able to defend the deep ball so far. I'm with Jaden. Tim Tim Johnson's got to step it up a bit, maybe with the pass and everything Jaden said. I, I co-signed it, Corey. Great job he did helping us out and helping you out. Uh, but you're right. we got to look at some uh, better opportunities coming up for the Warriors and the Bobcats. Speaking of your checklist, Corey, here's the review right there. You're right. Put the pressure on the quarterback. I think that's something they got to have to do and continue uh, with the checklist there. Yeah, finding the field position. Also, you have to steal those hitting yardage. yardage and in the next 24 minutes, hitting yardage is going to be key. And defending the deep ball. Don't want to get caught looking in the backfield. You know, the dynamic duo of this Theodore offense and Jimmy Haywood and Devontae Washington are capable of striking you running the football. But if you get caught looking in that backfield, you can get beat with the deep ball. On the flip side of that, you look at the situation for the Theodore Bobcats. Can they maintain and sustain success? They right. had that huge monumental win one week ago against the McGill Tulin Yellow Jackets. And I know Coach Carrier saying, hey, guys, we got to come back down to earth. That was a long time ago. We got to put that in our rearview mirror. Yeah. And you also have to bottle up the Warrior running game. Colby Blunt has busted a couple of big runs, have not been able to arm tackle him at the line of scrimmage and prevent penalties. Theodore has been called for some four penalties that have cost them close to 30 yards here in the first half of action. You're right about that, Corey. A lot of times in sports, especially in football, they call it the trap game where you're looking ahead to your next opponent. But the other thing that's really big is what's called that emotional letdown game. And Theodore coming off that big win of McGill. McGill was on a 30-game region winning streak over four years. And Theodore was on a short week, Corey, trying to come back now regroup. 
they're number one in the region, so they want to stay on top. But right now, it's 0 0, and you wouldn't know it right now. No, it's the way that the Bobcats have to play again. The Warriors are trying to go ahead and shake up this region and trying to shift the dynamics just like the Bobcats did one week ago. Jonathan Whitfield with the return for the Warriors gets it up to about the 25, maybe 26, 27 yard line as the rugby scrum pushes him forward up to maybe about the 30, 31, 30, we'll call it the 33 yard line. So the Warriors, right now they're riding the emotional high as they're looking to get started here in the second half. And that's the type of momentum that you want to have if you're the Davidson Warriors coming out of the locker room, getting the ball right at the 33, your own 33 yard line. And again, tempo has been dictated by run, run, run by both teams. We yep. saw the first half take less than 50 minutes to play. You have a 20 minute halftime, so we're going to come right out of the gate again to start the second half and have a penalty the same exact way we did to start the first half. That's how we started the ball game. You're right, Corey. Offense, five yards, replay first. Well, the Warriors are a little too excited. They're going to start over, but five yards farther back. So first and 15 for Davidson's first possession here in the second quarter. I'm sorry, th I'm sorry third quarter. And that's something that you didn't see a lot of in the first half, a lot of penalties against the Warriors. If I'm not mistaken, that may be the first penalty flag that has gone against the Davidson Warriors here in this contest. Davidson in that pistol formation. Colby Blunt tries to get back to the original line of scrimmage. He may have picked up four, so it'll be second down, and we'll call it about 11 yards here for the Warriors. You look at on the stop, Colton Higgins, as Blunt hits that line of scrimmage, and Higgins finds a way to tackle him as he tries to get to that second level, just prevents it. And again, Colton Higgins has over 43 tackles on the season. Second down and 10 yards to go for the Warriors. So they give Blunt credit for five yards there. Back to the original line of scrimmage. Little quick flare out. Warriors trying to get some movement going with the passing game. That pass out to D. Adrian Portlock. And it doesn't go forward, Corey. I believe they're going to just give him forward progress, possibly right there to the line of scrimmage. Portlock's going to make his ninth reception of the season for no gain. He continues to have the statistical receiving yardage of 44 yards on the season. But you're able to complete that pass. Tim Johnson, something that, again, he could have thrown it into the, into the dirt, but decided to hit him right between the numbers, and yeah. it was a good reception and completion. Let's see if he's able to build with the confidence level of it. New quarterback. That screen could not produce. They're trying to produce on a long one right here, and that ball is underthrown, incomplete, trying to catch it up to Dennis Hamilton. So that'll take Davidson to fourth down. And I thought they were going to go into the wildcat cap position and have an opportunity, but Timothy Johnson does take the snap in the shotgun and just overthrows his wide receiver, and that's the dynamic and the aspect of the explosive plays that the Davidson Warriors have really been lacking. Appears as if there was a flag on the play, Cora. I saw an official picking it up. And Davidson walking backwards. So an, an ineligible receiver was downfield on the play. So Theodore declines the penalty, so it will be fourth down. And Zach Workman runs out to about his 30-yard line to retrieve this punt from All-State punter Joe Montano. And if he's able to field this punt, let's see if he's able to give any type of juice or any type of spark to this Theodore Bobcat offense. Very short punt by Montano there. Kind of puts a draw on it. And it goes very short to about maybe the 44-yard line of Theodore. Let's take a look at both of these coaches, Corey. We're familiar with both of them. We've featured Theodore and Davidson. In the past three weeks, as a matter of fact, had Theodore last week. Coach Eric Collier in his sixth year over at Theodore, former Bryant head coach. We know he enjoys fishing. Right now coming in, Coach Collier in his sixth year over at Theodore. Now, Sean Smith, first year coaching four and three, former Davidson track and basketball coach. And 
we talked about a couple weeks ago, he's driven the bus for the football since 2002. Corey, I think you said he drives bus number one. Is that correct? That is correct. And, again, all three buses that are taken by this Warrior football team are driven by assistant coaches. Wow. You look at the replay and finally the push by the offensive line that the Bobcats have been waiting to get. Haywood's able to get and move the sticks, but Coach Sean Smith wanted me to give a shout out to his assistant coaches, Rob Miller, Sean Bernie, James Ray, Tyler Avira, and Charlie Agee doing a great job for the Davidson Warriors. Oh my goodness, Jimmy Haywood almost head taken off right there, but he escapes from the tackle, maybe gets one yard, vicious hit by the Warriors on it. You look at this wrap up, and that's literally what you mean by wrapping up oh. the ball carrier as Demetrius Johnson does an outstanding job of making sure he didn't have a horse collar but wrapped right. his arms all the way around the ball carrier. He didn't go through the A-gap. He jumped over the A-gap <laughs> on that one. My goodness, second and ten, well, maybe second and nine here for the Bobcats. Underwood finds his guy, Hunter Tillman, with a completion, and that's close to the first down marker. And that's going to be, I think it's going to be enough for a first down. They're going to move the sticks, and that's what you want to see. Hunter Tillman from his slot position making those type of secure catches for Tyler Underwood because all it takes is one or two catches for Underwood to catch fire right. and really put some completions together for this Bobcat offense. Jimmy Haywood up the middle, Corey, and he's trying to take that one to the house, but he is brought down by the Warriors. He had one guy to beat, and I believe he could not get past him. We know who that young man is. We've seen him a few times tonight. Reggie Davis wraps Haywood up to stop that uh, touchdown scoring run. And that's just an outstanding open field tackle as he gets to the next level. And like you just mentioned, Rashad Kaiser. Kaiser, not Davis. Stop. Yeah, Rashad Kaiser coming from his safety position, has 38 tackles on the season, two interceptions. He's only a sophomore. Did a good job of making sure he wrapped up Haywood. Bobcats inside the red zone for the first time tonight. Devontae Washington comes in. And he goes nowhere on that run, so it'll be second and 11 for the Bobcats. Reginald Davis, the second on the stop, and Davidson's been doing a good job of dialing up the blitzes. Kelly Eubanks, they've been able to hit the ball carrier in the backfield a couple of times, but when you're able to bring that outside pressure and be able to wrap up or at least stop the momentum of the ball carrier behind the line of scrimmage, it usually benefits the defensive coordinator continues to make that call. Underwood cannot escape the pocket. Another coverage sack for the Warriors, and they bring him down for a loss of about five or six yards. It's third and long for the Theodore Bobcats. Watch how quick this pocket collapses for Underwood. As you had four or five Davidson Warriors swarming the football, and ultimately Shamar Lewis from his linebacker position, the 5'7", 165-pound senior, is going to get credit for that. Going to bring up third down and 17 yards to go now for Theodore. Quite a defensive battle we have right here at the 657 mark. Still notched at 0-0. And one of the Davidson Warriors jumps into the neutral zone. And I believe Theodore will get the free five here. Here's the snap. Encroachment on the defense. Five yards. Replay third down. And you mentioned moments ago about how good they were doing taking the A gap and the B gap on the blitzes. And in that situation, just a little bit too anxious for the Warriors. They were getting ready to take again another blitzing situation from the linebacker situ uh, position and got called for encroachment. 16-14 Satsuma over the floor at halftime over at Pritchard Stadium. It's LaFleur's homecoming tonight, Corey. So I know the Rattlers are trying to get them a win tonight. They need this region win to stay alive and keep their chances open for a playoff opportunity. Tyler Underwood has room. And he has enough, and he runs that to pick up possibly a first down. Tyler Underwood on the carry there says his game reminds most people of Baker Mayfield, and he was definitely doing the Mayfield on that run. Has his eyes down the field, but then decides to step up in the pocket and sees no Davidson Warrior defenders in front of him. Probably would like to slide in that situation, but this guy's tough. Tyler Underwood <laughs> at 6'1", 185, doesn't know the definition of slide. He has 35 rushes, make that 36 rushes on the season 
for this senior quarterback. All right, it's first and goal ball right there at the six-yard line. Bobcats in power formation. Jimmy Haywood up the middle, keeping those legs going. Gets to maybe about the three or the two-yard line. I think they will give him four in progress at the two. Hard run, and we're going to see if the Bobcats deep in Warrior territory, the deepest they've been all game long, and it was set up on that short field. And Again, this is really where we saw last week to where they just hand the ball off to Jimmy Haywood and let him run right in between guard and tackle. Second and goal with that power formation again, and Haywood busts up the middle for a two-yard run. So Theodore on the board at 5-17 with the first score of the ball game. Gary Randall, the linebacker slash fullback, does a good job of creating a little space and a little opportunity, opens up that hole, and now you struck first and get on the board for the first scoring opportunity at the contest with 5-15 in the third quarter. Seth Tillman on for the PAT. Puts it up, and it is good. So we have some points on the board. Theater on top, 7 to nothing, over Davidson. Corey, we talked about Davidson coming into this ball game, riding a two-game shutout winning streak. That won't happen tonight. They beat MGM 25 nothing and 21 nothing over Murphy. It's been 13 years since the Warriors have had back-to-back -back shutouts. Way back when, so uh, that won't happen tonight. Theater on top seven to nothing. Got to thank our folks at Jersey Mike Sub since 1956, getting us hooked up, Corey, with the subs. A sub above, so so good. Mark and Christina Sinclair, thank you very much. Have three locations: one on Airport Boulevard, across from Academy Sports; one on Dolphin Street, across from McConnell Automotive, and then you also have the one in Malvis and yeah. a new one coming in Saraland. As you see right there in front of you, Magna School Applications. All going on. Application process starts November 5th. So if you need some information, there's the website and the phone number. Get your magnet school applications in. Let's check in with Kimberly Dunn on the sideline. What's going on, Kim? When we came out of halftime, I was able to speak with Theodore's principal, and I was getting a little bit of um, insight as to what it was like in the locker room with the team and kind of what he thought about this Theodore Bobcat team. And he said they knew during this game that they were going to have to come out fighting. They were expecting great things from these Davidson Warriors, and that's exactly what they have gotten so far in this game. So they knew that they were going to have to try and fight for this win, but he said that he had – all the faith in the world for those Theodore Bobcats, and he expects for them to come out with a win tonight. All right, Kimberly, they're up right now, seven to nothing over Davidson. Jonathan Whitfield with that return, but Corey, there is laundry all over the field between the 30 and 35 yard line. And something that's going to cause maybe offsetting penalties. So it's going to go against Davidson right now. I got to thank our folks over at Future Ones for hooking us up tonight with the pink polos. As we wrap it up, Corey, every week we've had a different awareness. So thanks to Future Ones for taking care of us tonight. After I believe we saw one of the guys next door, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, Gus Smith is actually in the building, the defensive coordinator for the Mobile Christian Leopards. Future Ones, wear the future. And tonight we're rocking the pink for Breast Cancer Awareness Month, October. We've had a different color every week october it's a lot of awareness is going on for the whole month so Corey, we tried to bring as much light as we could to the situation but tonight we're rocking the pink show support for breast cancer awareness and some of the players you see one with the spats and the pink and the pink, pink undershirts yep. and kimberly dunn rocking her pink on the sidelines as well pink so tape. <laughs> it, it's definitely a pink pink outfest but it's for a great cause breast cancer awareness pink uh Armbands. Matter of fact, Davidson had their pink out game last week against Murphy here at Ladd, as a matter of fact. So it's first and 10 right now. We'll get going. Ball on the 16 yard line. Hand off to Kobe Blunt and Corey. He is on the run at the 40. Can he be stopped? 30, 20, 15, 10, 5. It is Kobe Blunt into the end zone for a touchdown. It is 84 yards, Corey. Wow. And uh, one thing about that run. First of all, great job by the offensive line opening up the hole. But Colby Blunt, just look at him, put his foot down and hit the accelerator, folks. Number 31 coming into your living room. He is just absolutely outrunning the entire Bobcat defense. It's a young man, again, with over 1,000 yards rushing. 
they felt like they need to get number 31 on the ground. In that situation, he wasn't even touched. With this extra point, we could be knotted up at seven. Montana on with the PAT and it's good. And ladies and gentlemen, his name is Corey LeBounty. And that's how you get excited as a color guy. Great I mean, job right there, Corey. I mean, that's what you want. I oh, mean, yeah. You want to see that type of offense because you know the dynamic capabilities of Colby Blunt. And again, just fun to watch when you have that type of speed. Don't move. We'll be back. Wow, it was 0-0 at halftime. Now it's 7-7. MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week is on. When you need to know what's happening in Mobile County Public Schools, watch Inside Education with Helena Tyler for all the latest school news and in-depth reports on issues that affect your child right here on the MCPSS TV network. I'm Al Weed, joined by Corley Bounty. Down on the sidelines, we have Kimberly Dunn. And on the field, we have a tie ball game, 7-7, seven to seven, as Joe Montano is about to kick off. That's how you answer a score. You turn right around and give the ball to Mr. Blunt and let him do the rest, and he turns on the afterburners. And now you see the type of juice, the type of energy that has been produced on this Davidson Warrior sidelines after that tremendous touchdown run. You're right about that. Zach Workman feels that kind of somewhat of a deep pooch, pooch kick by Joe Montano. So Theodore will get the ball at their own 29-yard line, notched up 7-7. Seven to seven. Bobcats coming to this ball game on a six-game winning streak. The last time they won six in a row was back in 2010. That's 18 years ago. That's their first ever 10-win season. Only one blemish on the record, Corey. Game one, they lose to Daphne this season, but they run off a string so far. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see now if the offensive have gotten in gear and wearing down the defenses is Davidson bowls up and gets a big yep. stop on first down. And I think Theodore is going to have success on the play action or throwing the football because, again, Tyler Underwood has had some tremendous strides and made tremendous strides in his throwing game, and his wide receivers can go and get it everywhere on the field, right, right. as evident a week ago. But Davidson's made the adjustments. Coach Smith talked to us prior to the game, said they made differences, the changes in the secondary, simple changes, and so far tonight it's worked out for them. You alluded to it with that play action. That is something Theodore likes to do a lot. This is our fourth time covering them this season. And they are very, very good with that play action pass when they go to it. They've got some receivers up there trying to get it out right now to Zach Workman. And that ball looks like it's intercepted. Officials are going to mark that one as an interception, but a flag is in on the play. So right now, Rashard Kaiser coming down with the ball, but let's see what the call is going to be. Here's the replay. Underwood puts it up. And Kaiser just grabs it out of the air two feet down on the ground. But they're calling the penalty against Davidson. So that's going to wipe the interception off the board, Corey. Yeah, that's a big play that goes against the Warriors. On the defense, 15 yards from the previous spot. He's also in the first down. So P.I. against the Warriors. Wow. Interception negated because of a penalty. First down, ball at the 38-yard line of Theodore, so they get another life. Congratulations out to the Hank and Cougars, 2018 Mobile County Middle School champions. Got the big win today over Causey, 13-0, Corey. So uh, folks down there, Hank and Cougars are excited about their middle school champions. Yeah, Coach Sam Shelton's son was awarded the Crichton Optimist Club Player of the Week from Saraland High School yesterday. He's the head coach at Hankins Middle School, so congratulations to them. Going undefeated for yeah. the first time in school history, being the overall 2018 Mobile County Middle School football champions. And Coach Shelton, 
he felt really good about this opportunity for his team yesterday. Just said they played outstanding all yeah. season long. Congratulations on Cameron Huge Long for honor. the championship. Second and short here for the Bobcats. And that ball up to Jimmy Haywood. He's going up the middle, getting yards as he crosses the midfield stripe. And takes it into Warriors territory. Made about the 42-yard line as the chain game will move. It is first and 10 for Theodore. First down and 10 coming for Theodore. Shout out the coaching staff right there from Davidson getting out the signals to the defensive crew. Underwood looking to connect with O'Neal. That ball too high. Second time he has overthrown O'Neal tonight. And here's a look at the Crichton Optimist Club Players of the Week. I had the opportunity to uh, host the luncheon yesterday, Corey. And uh, two Theodore guys there, special teams player Seth Tillman, who was our pigskin player of the game by the week, and also defensive back Demoy Kennedy, both on hand, picking up awards. So uh, Eric Collier was uh, grinning ear to ear yesterday, Corey. Yeah, and rightfully so. Again, his Bobcat team with a big, big win over Region 4, McGill, Tulin. Those two young men were definitely – deserve to be recognized You're right and right now the bobcats are scratching and clawing for every bit of yardage they can get offensively second and 10 underwood slips as he hands the ball off to Devonte washington but washington picks up maybe two or three as we go to third down the line to make is the 32 yard line of davison to pick up this first down so Theodore almost about halfway there. We'll call it third and about a long six here coming up for the Bobcats. Make sure you put your thinking caps on. The game of the week, Brain Busters, headed your way. We hadn't forgot about just the third quarter, so we're going to put that question out there, see if we can uh, tickle some axons and two runs. Dendrites up there and get an answer. Underwood trying to escape right now using his brain power but his feet but he cannot as the Warriors are all over him for. And you just see so many black jerseys around the football as they're ripping and clawing trying to get Underwood to turn the football. The pocket just collapses very quickly for Underwood as wow. he just doesn't have a good opportunity to set his feet and really hasn't looked comfortable all night long but that's due to the defensive coordinator and the defensive pressure of this Warrior defense, Kelly Eubanks, again, giving up 16.4 points per game as a defense. And some interesting statistics here for the Theodore offense. They're 1-28 in since 2000 when scoring less than 10 points. Wow. 1-28 all time, Al. Something else. Wow. We do have a Bobcat down on the field. While we have a break, let's take a look at the Region 1 standings right here. Big win by Theodore last week. So that propels them to first place solidly at 6-0. and Fairhope and McGill tied up 4-1. and Davidson tonight 4-2. and So you can see the top four right there. And this game is kind of a feel your way out here. Uh, Baker at 2-3 and three and Foley at 1-4. and four. So, Corey, a lot at stake for Davidson, but also for Theodore as well. They don't want to give up a loss because uh, they could possibly maybe drop to a 2. You never know what could happen in the future. Yeah, you want to play one game at a time again that – McGill Tulin win by the Theodore Bobcats is definitely in the rearview mirror and has to be uh, for the Bobcats because you have to focus on each and every Thursday or Friday night and what's in front of you. And in 7A, this particular region, you yeah, can't take yeah. any opponent for granted. Let's flip over to what we like to call the toughest region in the state of Alabama, 6A Region 1, Sarahland, solidly in control, 8-0 so far undefeated. And Spanish Fort right there, 5-0. and That's going to be a big contest with them matching up. Blunt, 5-1, and still in the thick of it. But look right there at St. Paul's 3-2, and moving up from 5A, keeping their hopes alive. And matter of fact, Corey, we'll do a quick early tease next week. We'll have Sarah Lynn and Blunt up at Blunt. And this is a huge injury for the Theodore Bobcats as Tyler Underwood wow. is being helped off the field, not putting any pressure on on that right knee it's mm. going to bring in backup quarterback gavin moore as it's fourth down and five so we'll have to keep an eye on tyler underwood and the health of him on the sidelines yeah that would be a huge loss for the bobcats so Seth tillman going to try to pin the warriors back but that ball scoops into the end zone so it's a touchback at 125 remaining here in the third quarter. 5A, we'll take a look at the region standings. We know the number one team in the state of Alabama is right here on the Gulf Coast, the Viger Wolves. 
They are solidly in control. That's a big ball game tomorrow night at Pritchard Stadium as Citronel will come down to take on the Wolfpack. Jackson and Faith Academy right there in the hunt. And also, you cannot rule out LaFleur or Satsuma as well. So that third and fourth position has not been locked up just yet in 5A Region 1. Yeah, every game critical. Viger trying to capture, I do believe, their third consecutive region title if they're able to beat the Centronel Wildcats tomorrow. First and 10 for the Davidson Warriors. Ball on their 20-yard line. Handing it off to Jonathan Whitfield. He tries to get past the 20. They may give him a yard on that carry. Looks like it's actually going to be at the line of scrimmage, so no far progress. And lastly, we'll take a look at 4A Region 1 standings. UMS right all in control on top, number one team in 4A in the state. Escambia County at 4-1, Hillcrest and Williamson looking alive right there. And Andalusian, Clark County not exactly out of it as well. So when you have that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7 team region, you have an opportunity to get in at maybe a 4 and 4, I mean 4 and 3 or 3 and, I'm sorry, 3 and 3 record. So not quite over yet in Region 4A, Region 1. Corey, I see you taking a look at the sidelines across there. Are they working on Underwood right now? Yeah, that's what I really wanted to check out on the far sidelines, which is where the Theodore Bobcats' training staff has attended the Tyler Underwood. And it looks like they're working on his ankle area at this point in time. Glad to see it's not a knee good, good. that they're working on also. And They've taken the cleats off of them. So, again, if the Bobcats defense is able to hold right here, it will be up to Gavin Moore, the backup quarterback, for the Theodore Bobcats to come in and take snaps. Third nine, delayed draw for the Warriors, and it goes nowhere. Maybe one yard for Colby Blunt. And that's going to take Davidson to fourth down. And also that will take us to the end of the third quarter as well. There's the replay right there for Blunt. So that's the end of three quarters for us here at Legendary Lab People Stadium. We are notched up 7-7. Seven seven. All right, Corey, we got a break here. Let's put out the question between the quarters here. The game of the week, Brain Buster. I'm going to throw this one out. Can you name what former Davidson and Theodore players are currently on an NFL team's active roster? What former players from Davidson and Theodore are currently on the NFL team's active roster. There's your brain buster question, game of the week question. We'll come back with the answer later on in the fourth quarter. I think you might have an idea. You're kind of smiling over there, Corey. Well, I'll tell you, Al, you've done a great job this whole season of coming up with some excellent and outstanding questions. But I tell you, the Mobile County Public School System should be very proud of those young men who are currently in the NFL because there's so many of them from the Gulf Coast it area. Is. It is. And it's just it's mind-boggling when you think about it. It's a true brain buster. If you're fans of this area, you'll definitely it'll come to you very quickly. If not, and you aren't aware of how many NFL players are on rosters from the Mobile Baldwin County area, when you get the answer to this brain buster, it you'll see. It is an unbelievable number. Hunter Tillman back to receive the punt tonight. Zach Workman has been handling punt return to kickoff duties, but right now, Hunter Tillman awaits the kick from Joe Montano. Montano gets a nice one off. Tillman calls for the fair catch, so he's going to take that right there at about the 37-yard line, so we will get a look at the Theodore Bobcats offense, and I see Gavin Moore creeping onto the field. He's a junior, Corey, so We'll get a look and see how he comes in to replace Tyler Underwood. And here's the interesting statistic about Gavin Moore. He's 0 of 3 passing for the season. Five rushing yards for 44 yards. And that's all you've gotten from this young man because Tyler Underwood has taken the majority of the snaps. But when you have a dynamic running back like Devontae Washington and Jimmy Haywood that's to right. hand the ball off to and you're able to get that offensive line push, you may not have to throw the ball that much. That's the one thing I was about to say. With that one-two punch, score, you may not have to do too much there. And they decide to go that route, but wrapped up behind the line, Jimmy Haywood goes nowhere. I'm sorry, Devontae Washington on that carry, he goes nowhere. Demetrius Johnson, the sophomore linebacker, just again finds that open gap and absolutely destroys the ball carrier in Washington. And you're bringing up now second down and 13 yards to go for Theodore. 
Jamie Haywood checks into the ball game to replace Washington. It's literally a one-two punch with this uh, quarterback combo. The jet sweep for Hunter Tillman. There's the utility knife. And he takes it to about the 44-yard line. Nice run by Hunter Tillman. And that's something that may give you the electric shock that you need offensively as we take a look at the replay. Hunter Tillman, the versatility like you just mentioned, Al, he's had several rushes. That makes his eighth rush of the season only for 11 yards, but has one touchdown out of that 11 yards that he had. There's a look right there at Underwood on the bench, Corey, as our camera crew taking a peek into the sidelines there. Looks like they may be trying to rewrap his ankle and give him some extra support. Again, he wasn't putting any weight on that right foot or on that right leg. So let's see if they're able, the trainer staff are able to get him taped up and maybe make a difference. So play clock running down under 10 seconds. So Coach Eric Collier is going to call for the timeout right now and discuss things why take a penalty. So we have a break. We just put the question out there. So, Corey, if you're ready, we'll come up with uh, see if you got an answer. Game of the week, Brain Buster, can you name what former Davidson and Theodore players are currently on an NFL team's active roster? What do you have to say, Corey? Well, for Theodore, it has to be C.J. Mosley. Okay. And then I think you have two teammates to play for the San Francisco 49ers from Davidson High School and Jimmy Ward and Jaquaski talk. All right, let's see if that is the answer. My buddy Wade and Miss Diane can reveal it, and boom, look at there. Corey, you are the winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner for you, sir. C.J. Mosley with the Ravens and Jaquaski Tart and Jimmy Ward, San Francisco Ford. And very odd, both went to the same high school and both on the same team. We were mentioning Sam Shelton earlier from Hankins Middle School. Right, right. We were talking with him yesterday at the Crichton Optimus Club banquet. He had an opportunity to coach three first-round draft picks. Unbelievable. All from the Mobile County Public School System middle school team when he was coaching at Pillins. You had Nick Fairley. He also had an opportunity to coach Jamarcus Russell. Yep. And then Rodney Hudson, the, se uh, the, the center for the Oakland, Oakland Raiders. Raiders. Yeah, unbelievable. Jimmy Haywood, no surprise there as he takes that ball past the midfield stripe to pick up a first down. So, yeah, that was unbelievable when Coach Shelton shared that with us yesterday. I couldn't believe that. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it's hard enough to coach one NFL player, much less three coming all out of the first round. And yeah. the Theodore Bobcats wanted to come out of this game trying to stay injury-free as next week they're going to be – playing host to the MGM Vikings, but you look at Workman over there on the bench, it looked like he was in a little bit of agony and pain, and you already see the starting quarterback Tyler Underwood go out, so Gavin Moore really has his hands full coming out with the top all game. Jet sweep to Hunter Tillman, and look at him go. He's near the numbers, picks up the first down, and keeps chugging along to about maybe the 35-yard line. Corey, that is something we talk about week after week, especially the last couple of weeks. We've been able to see Theodore and also Davidson. And as we talk to Coach Collier and uh, Coach Ridgeway and Ham Barnett, their two deep lineup for us, the lineup really hasn't changed. They've remained healthy. So seeing uh, Underwood go out and Workman go out, somewhat of a surprise this evening. It is. And on that particular jet sweep, you see the D Davidson Warriors not be able to keep containment. And as soon as you get around to that end, you have a problem. That's an outstanding shot of exactly what we're talking about, the two offensive explosive firepower on the bench for the Theodore Bobcats. Underwood, one of the impact players for the Bobcats. So right now, Coach Collier and the crew, they're going to play smart, high percentage, and keep the ball on the ground and pretty much just run it ground to pound. Yeah, right at 10 minutes here to go in the fourth quarter. And we saw Seth Tillman kick a 30-yard field goal a week ago, and I know it was in the friendly confines of C.A. Douglas <laughs> Field at home. Right. The dynamics and the dimensions are a little bit different. The backdrop a little bit different here at Lab People Stadium. But now it's second down and six yards to go for Theodore. Your most explosive offense has been running the football with Jimmy Haywood and the jet sweeps with Hunter Tillman. Fairly even crowd out here tonight at Lad Stadium. I may want to say I would give a slight edge to the Bobcat faithful. Fumble on and the that play. that fumble ball's on the ground. But there's a flag also on the ground as well. Could this be a pre-snap penalty? Right now they're awarding the ball to Davidson. With the second turnover if it stands. They had a pickup fumble earlier from Jaden McCants. There's Underwood trying to walk it off, Corey. 
It looks like a possible ankle sprain there, something going on with ankle. So false start against Theodore. That penalty is declined, so that's a fumble. Second turnover of the night. Let's see if we're able to take a look at that replay. It was a quarterback center exchange problem, and that's sometimes the problem that you have. Gavin Moore doesn't take a lot of the reps, and Cole Payne is the center for the Bobcats, and that ball just gets away from him at the line of scrimmage, and now the Warriors take over at their own 36-yard line with 9.25 remaining. I'm sorry, that's turnover equal tonight. First turnover by Davidson on the fumble, so Davidson recovers the fumble right there. So Blunt with a nice run, picks up maybe three or four, take take the Warriors the second down. Critical turnover right there at the 9-15 mark of the fourth quarter. And let's see if the Warriors are able to capitalize here on second down and six yards to go with the clock continuing to run. You know Kobe Blunt's been their most dynamic weapon as the Warriors have only attempted close to three passes. Tonight. Right. Blunt picks up maybe a yard or two, so it's third down and about five right here. Critical play call for the Warriors sitting in no man's land, if you want to call it. Tim Johnson takes a snap. Corey's rolling out, trying to pass. He has a guy. Can he connect? And that ball is dropped. Jaden Jordan had his hands all over the pigskin and drops it, Corey. And that's just one that Jay Jordan mm. would love to have. He only has four receptions for 61 yards, but you look, you could not ask for a better throw by quarterback Tim Johnson. I mean, he actually was on the run to his right, right. threw the ball close to 40 yards, and Jordan was not able to squeeze any grease out of the pigskin. <laughs> Next week, we're taking it up to Pritchard. Blunt versus Sarah Land. This is going to be a big one, a 6A Region 1 battle. We'll go live at 655 as the Leopards and Spartans go head-to-head -head for next week's MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week. High snap to Montano, but flag on the play. So the play is ruled dead. Private snap, false start on the offense. Five yards, replay fourth down. And watch for the pressure coming from the outside. Cameron Brown's been setting himself up coming from the edge yeah. for the Theodore Bobcats and has come close. If he would lay himself out, I think it would be a clean block coming from that outside speed rush position. Underwood back there behind his Bobcats teammates walking gingerly. Another high snap, and Montano has to get it off quick. Tillman calls for the fair catch. Let's take it down to Kimberly Dunn. She's got an injury update for us for the Bobcats. Yes, I was able to go and check on number 18, who is Underwood on the Theodore Bobcat sidelines. And he is definitely injured in his ankle. It's a severe an ankle injury, but he has more willpower than he does anything else. So he is just trying to walk that injury off as best he's he can they wrapped it up about three times there was about three people trying to get it in his shoe get his sock back on to try and do something with it but he is definitely in a lot of pain but completely wants to be back in this football game it's just all going to depend on if that willpower can overpower the pain that he is feeling so we will see thank you kimberly as kimberly gave our report we could see uh, underwood over on the sidelines there he is right there just walking, trying to put power, walking gingerly. Hunter Tillman on that jet sweep, Corey, but a flag on the play. So let's see if this one, it, it, it does go against the Bobcats. So false start, pushing back five yards. So the Bobcats do survive the turnover. No points off the turnover for the fumble. On the offense, five yards. Replay first down. So Gavin Moore will get a do-over to come back here. So 7.45, critical junk of the ball game right here, Corey, 7-7. And, I mean, Al, you look at my checklist, and Theodore, can they maintain and sustain success? So far, I know Coach Collier is not happy with that. Bottle up the Warrior running game where you're not able to bottle up Colby Blunt because he burst on to the scene with the 84-yard touchdown run and preventing penalties. That's close to the sixth penalty of the night by the Bobcats. Workman not back in the ball game. They're going to get that off to Jimmy Haywood. He's coming to the near side to the numbers. 
And he's met by the Warriors. Can I get back to the line of scrimmage? Makes it up to about the 25. Reginald Davis, the second, has done an outstanding job coming from his secondary position and making stops for this Davidson Warrior defense. As you take a look at it, as Haywood gets beyond the line of scrimmage, and it's just cleaned up. A, a, a wonderful job and a wonderful tackle. Good job from his outside linebacker position Good of job. wrapping up. Davis not letting go of that leg there. Second down. We'll call about 13, maybe 12 yards here for the Bobcats. Little pitch out to Jimmy Haywood. You know he wants to make something out of that one and gets it past the 30-yard line up to about the 32. It'll be third down. Let's take a look at the remaining contest for Theodore for this season. Hosting Mary Montgomery next week and then at Enterprise. So one more region game remains for the Bobcats, Corey. As you can see right there, six in a row for Coach Eric Collier. Yeah, I mean, Coach has a tough schedule. And, again, he's going to have to survive tonight to try to stay atop the 7A Region 1. Play clock under 10 seconds. The game clock right at 650. Third and about six, another pitch out. This time, Devontae Washington. But the Warriors wrap him up, and there's your guy right there in, in on the action, Reggie Davis, Corey. Yeah, from his outside linebacker position, again, I can't emphasize enough how active he's been and what a tremendous job he's done of disrupting this Theodore offense. Now here's the re the remaining schedule for the Davidson Warriors. They're 4-2 and two in the region right now playing a region game tonight. And then they will have Lee Montgomery coming down, and then they will be at Foley. So this game, very, very critical for the Warriors to keep their playoff hopes where they are, stay alive. They could possibly go from a four to maybe a three or a two seed, depending on what other teams do, Corey. So they don't really control their destiny, but they need a little help if they want to move up in the seed. Yeah, Coach Collier has preached worrying about the Bobcats. That's the only team he's worried about. And right now, he's worried about the scoreboard because he doesn't feel his team has been playing up to their potential. And he wants them to sustain and maintain success. The Bobcats are going to have to get a big stop right here because now it's just going to come down to flipping the field and field position. And that's what's very important for both of these teams. Now, we saw Colby Blunt explode for an 84-yard run earlier in the contest at the 440 mark of the third quarter. So we know what he can do. He can literally change the game in one run behind that big 249-pound average offensive line. Corey, I would not be surprised, though. Right now, Davidson could have the possibility to jump ahead here as we approach six minutes remaining in the ball game. And it's going to be gut check time for Ham Barnett's defense, who's only given up 5.5 points per game, excuse me, 5.1 points per game, yeah. and it's 6-0 and in this region. They've done a good job having three shutouts this season. Won't get the shutout tonight, but gut check time to see if the defense can answer the call. Tim Johnson lost that one into the air, and that is an interception. Cam Brown, Corey, in on that pick. Wow, Cam Brown brings it down. And, yep, that, that's pretty much going to put that ball into Theodore's possession there. Wow. Cam Brown's third interception of the season. He's the 5'10", 180-pound senior who will be playing again as an impact player in tonight's game listed by us and also in the Alabama-Mississippi All-Star game. Had an interception a week ago, comes up with his second interception in back-to-back -back weeks you look at him he's roaming the field does a good job of reading the eyes of tim johnson is comes away with a huge pick with 537 remaining here in the fourth quarter let's see if the bobcat offense can get it going but that's two turnovers for the davidson warriors as jimmy haywood runs the ball for about three or four yards up to the 35 yard line Positive yards on first down by the Bobcats, and that's going to be the biggest thing for them to go ahead. And the offensive line has remained intact, even though you have Workman and Underwood on the bench with injuries right. of some sort. And the Bobcats just have to be able to dominate at the line and scrimmage here this last five minutes and get in the field goal range or in the plus side of the field of the Warriors. Hunter Tillman in motion. They fake the jet sweep and give it to Jimmy Haywood as he barrels up past the 40-yard line. Picks up a couple more. So it's going to be third and short 
as the Bobcats are in front of the in front of the chains. No bigger play in the game for the Davidson Warrior defense than getting a stop right here on third down. You don't want those chains to continue to move for Theodore, and you know they want to go to their ground and pound game because yeah. when you have a big back like Jimmy Haywood, who's able to run and be elusive between guard and tackle the way he is, he's able to go forward with his momentum and pick up yardage. Critical play right here, third and one. And it looks like it was a miscommunication between Moore and Haywood, but I think Haywood took the high road as the senior said, give me the ball and let me run. <laughs> if we take a look at the replay, wow. he just took the football away from Gavin Moore on that handoff as it was a miscommunication. He took the snap oh, he took the away snap. from him. Wow. Almost like a wildcat snap, even though it wasn't intended to right, be, right. was able to move the chain and move the pile of the Warriors defense. Right here, the Davidson Warriors defense may be getting a little tired, but I expect offensive coordinator Justin Ridgeway to keep pounding the football. And off once again to Haywood as he's approaching the midfield strike. And we are approaching the three-minute mark. Corey, have you even given consideration to the peak skin player of the game so far right now? I really have. And, I mean, right now for the Davidson Warriors, you have to lean toward Colby Blunt. Right. And for the Theodore Bobcats, Jimmy Haywood I agree. has really done a good job of running the peak skin tonight also. Those two men both responsible for the scores on the board tonight. Blunt with the 84-yard touchdown and Haywood with a two-yard run to get on the board first. Hunter Tillman on that jet sweep, and, Corey, that's enough to sweep to a first down from my vantage point here atop legendary Lab People Stadium. We've seen the Bobcat offense run this play maybe four times tonight, and it's just the jet sweep to Hunter Tillman. Once you lose containment on the outside, he's able to turn that corner and get those additional yards that he needs to move those orange sticks across the way. That is first down. And right now, Coach Collier playing it smart, keeping it on the ground. Him and his offensive coordinator, Coach Ridgeway, but also allowing the clock to be their ally because they know they in their back pocket they have Seth Tillman, who kicked two last week, I believe, against McGill. Two field goals to help them uh, beat McGill. While well, we got a break right here, let's take a look at the Alabama Sports Writers Association state football poll. So 7A. I'm sure we have some movement in there with the loss last week. McGill took to Theodore, so basically McGill drops from 6 to 9, and Theodore moves up from 9 to 8. I thought they would have gotten a little higher core, but they fall right there to the 8 position. Fairhope picking up a couple votes, uh, five votes there, trying to get into the poll. Yeah, that Region 3 is so very competitive in the 6A. Wow. Uh, I mean, you have Hoover coming from that area, Mountain Brook, yep. Hewitt, Trustville, all from the same, and Thompson coming all from the same region, Region yeah. 3 and 7A. All right, let's take a look, see if we can get the 6A top 10 up. Spanish Fort and Sarah Land right there, number two and number three in the state. Sarah Land undefeated, but behind Spanish Fort, so they will be locking heads pretty soon. Next week, we're going to have Sarah Land and Blunt. So that's going to be a big contest as well. Sarah Land on the bye this week, Cor. Yeah, and it's up to Jeff Kelly and his team off to an 8-0 start to get fresh and have that big matchup that we're going to have right here next week. Low snap. First and 10, and Jimmy Haywood is wrapped up by the Warriors after that timeout by Eric Collier and the Theodore Bobcats try to set up a play here, probably maybe get a little two-minute drill if they can. Viger on top 5A still remaining. In the 5A poll, undefeated at 7-0. Citronelle picking up a couple of votes down there at 5-2. That's a big game tomorrow, Citronelle and Viger, over at uh, Pritchard Stadium tomorrow night. So second and long right here. What we call about second and 11 for the Bobcats. Handed off to Tillman on that sweep. He's got room, Corey. He's trying to cut back. He's got some area, but he is brought down, hunt, hunted down by Reginald Davis and some more Warriors there. Yeah, game-saving, touchdown-saving oh, yeah. tackle by Rashad Kaiser. You look at the vision by Hunter Tillman. He cuts across to his right, then cuts across the grain quickly. And if you don't make that tackle right there, he's going in for six. We're under the two-minute mark here at Lab People Stadium. You know, I'm really smelling overtime. I, I think that Davidson, unless they get caught in some type of play-action situation with this backup quarterback, Gavin Moore, in, you know he's not going to throw the ball deep. Third and four, handoff to Haywood, 
He's trying to get the first down. Oh, Corey, he was almost there, but your boy Kaiser got him and tripped him up. <laughs> Textbook style, folks. Wow. You look at Rashad Kaiser's form. He sizes it up. Haywood thinks he's going to break away, and Kaiser says, No, sir, I'm going to chop the legs right out from under you and undercut you and bring up a fourth down in one situation. Not only did Kaiser have a textbook tackle, folks, he saved a first he did. down. He did. By the Bobcats, and that was a just tremendous play. To me, that's the play of the game, the tackle of the game so far by yeah. the Davidson Warriors. Haywood was going to get that first down if Kaiser didn't get him on the tackle. Now, if he got the first down, he may have stopped the touchdown, but he was going to get that first down. Textbook. Wow, wow. Let's take a look at the 4A poll right quick. We know UMS right all on top of things, defending state champion in 4A as well right there. And another local team in the area, Scambia County, picking up uh, four votes, trying to inch into the top 10 poll. So there's your 7A, 6A, 5A, and 4A Alabama Sports Writers Association polls for the state. So, Corey, I agree with you. Tackle of the game. That was a game changer. Davidson needed that bad. And in that situation now, it, it, you could not ask for a young man who was a sophomore to make a bigger play. He has close to 40 tackles and two interceptions on the season, but no bigger tackle on his huddle film or his YouTube oh, or yeah. highlight film than the one he just made on third down. As you can see it right there in front of you, we're going live at 655 next week up in Pritchard. Make sure you join us, Sarah Land and Blunt. That's going to be a big 6A battle. But right now, it gets no bigger than this. Fourth and one, I'm going to be quiet and let the pictures tell the story. Haywood up the middle with the big game. Corey, we thought they may have seen a flag on the play. There should have been a false start. Don't you look one. at the replay, and we're not able to actually pick it up right there. But I do believe the fullback moved early, and the Warriors coaching staff on the sidelines is irate they are that there was no flag on the play yep. early. I thought it was and coming out too. Tremendous yardage picked up on fourth down and one by this Bobcat team, always already down to the 18-yard line of the Warriors. Big run by Jimmy Haywood right there. Davidson has two timeouts remaining. Thiddo has one. Bobble snap by Gavin Moore, and he almost kind of pitches it forward. It's a, a fumble on the ground. And let's see, the Warrior, the Warrior faithful happened. are excited. I think the Davidson Warriors have come away with it. Who knows what's going on in the bottom of that pile, Corey. Yeah, the Davidson the ball Warriors do have it. They have it. The Warriors have the football, and that's the second time, Al, we've seen a bad quarterback center snap. That's right. Haywood took it away from Gavin Moore, but that's just one of the things that you have when you have a backup quarterback in the game and you're trying to get the timing down. It really wasn't there, but as the Bobcats are knocking on the door wow. to score and take this game away from overtime, the Warriors find a way to come away with a turnover. Ball on the 18-yard line, a fumble recovery picked up by the Davidson Warriors. And, Corey, your premonition possibly could be on the horizon. You felt overtime could be in the midst. We'll see 37 seconds remaining. Remember, Colby Blunt ran an 84-yard touchdown at the 440 mark of the third quarter. And Coach Sean Smith is going to say, I'm going to live to play a little later. I'm going to take a knee right now. And let's go to the rules of overtime. I'm not sure this will be our first overtime game of the season that we will be broadcast this season yeah and it's you know it's where both teams have an opportunity to have a possession so 37 seconds remaining i think coach Sean smith called timeout that's what he did magnet school applications right there in front of you make sure you get yours in the process is going to start november 5th need that information log on mcpss.com get your magnet school application and know we had a successful Signature Academy showcase this past Tuesday night at the Mitchell Center, but it never stops with MCPSS, Corey. There's something always going on. Definitely a lot going on tonight here at Lad People Stadium between these two teams. The Theodore Bobcats with a huge win last week over the McGill Tooling Yellow Jackets to end their 30-game region winning streak, starting a region winning streak of their own, trying to maintain that now. And looks like Coach Smith's going to be happy to go to overtime. Yep, he's going to do it. He took the time out. And now the game clock finally starts moving there. Kind of was delayed after Johnson took his knee. Play clock hasn't started. So, Corey, we had one overtime game last year that we called between Williamson and Viger. So this will be our first overtime ball game this year. 
Well, we talked about at the beginning of the specialist for both teams, Seth Tillman winning the Player of the Week award for the Crichton Optimus Club for his great special teams play against the McGill Tulin Yellow Jackets. Joe Montana, Montano listed as one of our impact players because of his ability to kick field goals and positionally kick the football. So here we are going into overtime, tied at 7-7 seven to seven in this 7A Region 1 contest. Well, it took two quarters to get 0-0, zero to zero, and it took two more quarters to get 7-7, seven to seven, <laughs> and it's going to take another quarter to see if we can get a winner here uh, with overtime rules coming up, Corey. So both teams will get the ball we'll start at the 10-yard line. You have to be excited now. The thing in overtime that you want to definitely prevent are penalties. You don't want any negative yardage situation. You want to put it on the short field, allow your field goal kicker, within 10 yards or closer to the goal line right. to have an opportunity to kick that automatic field goal. Like we saw Seth Tillman kick two a week ago. Joe, Joe Montano, we've seen him kick a 50-yarder here at Lab People Stadium earlier in the year against Baker. So we know both specialists wow. can get it done. So Coach Carrier is hoping to sustain and maintain the Davidson Warriors yeah. looking to upset the Theodore Bobcats be because, huge. again, the Bobcats are undefeated in region play. And Davidson, just a tremendous job, gut check time by their entire team tonight, oh yeah. Oh yeah. showing up and being ready to play tonight. And, unfortunately, one of your impact players for the Bobcats, Tyler Underwood, has a, some, if you want to call it now, a negative impact because of his injury having to come out. And Gavin Moore comes in, and that fumble right there, after they get the big first down from Jimmy Haywood a couple plays later, the fumble, and Davison jumps on top of it. And it's like our emotions, it's, it's been topsy-turvy here tonight. Yeah, I mean, Coach talked about it at the beginning of the game and at halftime with Kimberly Dunn. He says he doesn't want the emotions of his team to take right. over. He wants the energy to be there. And so far, we've seen a lot of energy, especially off of the couple of turnovers that the Warriors have been able to create. But extra football, we were doing great time-wise because both teams were really grounding and pounding the football. It was a first half that only lasted maybe 45 minutes. Very quick, very a quick. A quick second half also, and now we're going to catch up from a time standpoint because <laughs> yeah. we're going to overtime. We are. I checked my watch as Theodore was driving it down, and we were approaching 9 o'clock as I looked down, and a couple plays later, it was a fumble on the play, and I went back to the thought of what you said. Might have some overtime coming, yeah. Al, and lo and behold, Corey, you were right about that. So uh, we have overtime headed your way. Pretty much uh, both captains will come out with Rick Johnson, and they'll uh, do a little toss and decide what's going to go on. You want to review your checklist there? Yeah, yeah. You go back to what Theodore had to do on my checklist. Can they maintain and sustain success? Well, they've struggled with that thus far, and we're going to overtime because of it. Bottle up the Warrior running game. I know Colby Blunt has at least over 130 yards rushing tonight and preventing penalties. A couple of penalties have been costly and really been negative for the Theodore Bobcats. On the flip side of that, the Davidson Warriors put enough pressure on Tyler Underwood to actually probably at the bottom of the pile have him to come up with some type of ankle injury. Right. They were able to find field position by Joe Montano, and this defense was able to hold its own. And defending the deep ball, you haven't seen – Moore or Underwood complete a pass over some 25 yards, which would be considered an explosive play. Now we're in overtime looking for a fantastic finish here at Lab People Stadium. So Davidson will be defending the north end zone as Theodore will be moving forward. And we are headed to overtime here at Lad People Stadium. Al Weed and Corey Bounty, Kimberly Dunn on the call. Corey, I like to call it now. We're getting some free football going on. Free football. Uh, you have to enjoy it. I know Coach Williams uh, I, from BC Rain just said, too blessed to be stressed, extra football. You're exactly <laughs> right, Coach Williams. I am too blessed to be stressed because I'm not one of those coaches out there on the sidelines having to endure this extra overtime period. And I know Lee Shervanian was tuned in earlier. He goes to bed very early, he but sure I does. hope he does not miss this fantastic finish here at Lab People Stadium tonight either. All right, they're going to spot the ball at the 10-yard line. We'll see the Bobcats offense. Let's see what they can put up on the board here as we go into the first overtime period. 
Hunter Tillman. Hunter Tillman takes that snap and gets into the end zone. So that is a touchdown for the Bobcats, Core. They come out immediately and score. That's one way to solve your problems offensively, the center to quarterback exchange. You put Hunter Tillman in it running back slash quarterback and you directly snap him the ball don't worry about a jet sweep just give the ball to hunter tillman in the wildcat position he scores a rushing touchdown which is his second rushing touchdown of the season now the pressure falls on the davidson warriors when they have the football he is the swiss army knight for the bobcats and he's also the holder for his cousin, Seth Tillman. And the extra point is no good, Corey. No good. 13 to 7. Wow. Well, I tell you, Cam Barnett, the defensive coordinator for the Peter Bobcats, is really, really talking to his defense because, again, they only give up 5.1 points per game, have given up seven tonight to the they Davidson have. Warriors. The Theodore Bobcat defense comes in with three shutouts. They're 41-3 and three since 2000 when allowing 10 points or less. You look at the direct snap to Hunter Tillman. He's able to get around the left end, able to get past the containment defense that Davidson was trying to play. Now let's see if the Warriors can answer. Well, the Warriors know what they need to win the game. First, they need a touchdown, then a PAT. And Colby Blunt was headed that way but brought down right at the five-yard line. Good tackle by the Bobcat defense. Jamil Richardson stepping up to make that play for Theodore. And Blunt is looking to bounce to the outside and break the containment of the Theodore Bobcat defense. Gets it down to the five-yard line where it will be second and goal to go. Jim Johnson in the shotgun looking to pass this one. Throws it across the middle. If that's picked off, it would have been the ball game. Oh, my goodness. A.J. <laughs> Braxton can't believe he couldn't reel it in, Corey. Trying to go to the tight end, Jerquan Scott, the 6'4", 248-pound senior, trying to leak out. And Tim Johnson really was eyeing him down as he rolls out to his right and tries to throw back left. It's always tough when you throw across your body, but yep. an interception opportunity is dropped. Now it, it's two-down territory because you right. have to score a touchdown, but an extra point and a touchdown will win the game for the Warriors. Gutsy call by the Warriors right there in the pistol formation. They're going to go high percentage, hand off the Kobe Blunt, and a wall of Bobcats push him back at the four-yard line. Here it is. Comes down to fourth down and goal to go in overtime. This is it. For the Davidson Warriors, you definitely want to call a timeout right here to kind of compose your team and tell you work on a two-minute drill or a goal line drill situation in practice. Situation, situational practices right. are always being uh, coached up by the coaches. You have a situational day every day uh, in practice. And this situation now, goal line to go offensive coordinator Ken Boatman in his third year at Davidson High School, has to pull the best play out of the playbook. Well, we know who the best player offensively on the field is right now. For oh, the we, already know that. we already know That's that. Kobe next Blunt. week, next week we're headed up to Blunt for Blunt and Sarah Land. Make sure you join us for that one. Boy, we got a good one right now, but I'm pretty sure that will be just as great next week. We'll go live at 655 for the MCPSS. TV Network High School Football Game of the Week. So, Corey, I wonder if you if you go with the obvious route or you go a little trickeration. I, I think you have what? to go with the trickeration right here. I, you know, Dennis Hamilton has one receiving touchdown on the season. Colby Blunt coming out of the backfield maybe on some type of swing pass. All you right. have Whitfield also. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what the play call is going to be. So Whitfield in the backfield. Colby Blunt at the top. Looked like he was going into motion, but... A timeout has been called, I believe, by Coach Eric Collier. He uses his timeout right there. Yes, he's going to talk with Ham Barnett. Coach Collier is on the sideline to get the defensive guys together because I guarantee that's a look that you really, as a coach, earn your pay on, knowing film study, knowing the tendencies, knowing where they're trying to go, especially with Blunt not in the backfield and spread out as a wide receiver. Right. Greer's apples for the students. 
Make sure Greer's Market is once again teaming up with Mobile County Public Schools for the 10th annual Apples for the Students program. Unlike traditional fundraisers, Apples for the Students is easy and fun. Best of all, everyone in the community can take part. It's simple. You shop, save your receipts, and turn them in at school, and the school can earn valuable items like computers and school supplies. So shop Greer's Market for the Apples for the Students programs. And also, we got to thank my folks at Future Ones, Corey, for hooking us up tonight. I think the pink came just right in time, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and we're shining bright like these kids are shining bright tonight. Here it is, the ball game right now. Johnson rolling out, and he, he gets it. it completed. <laughs> he got it. That's that going to be 28. That is completed. Portlock. DeAdrian Portlock. So the Warriors on the board right now. We're tied 13 to 13, and on comes All-State kicker Joe Montano for the PAT. Tim Johnson just threw his third touchdown pass of the season. Of the year. He came in on the season 29 of 68 for 368 yards with three interceptions. Make that three touchdowns. Al, I'll let you take it away. Here we go. The kick is up, and Montano does it 14 to 13. The Warriors upset the Theodore Bobcats. Oh, my goodness. And the Warriors storm the field as the Bobcats are in disbelief, Corey. Week to week, anything can happen in 7A Region 1 football. Nobody believed in this Warrior team besides the Davidson Warriors. Wow. Could they sustain and maintain? Not longer than a week, and that's the biggest thing. It's a short week. Getting these guys up was tough for Coach Carrier this week. It was. It was. You look at the MVP or the most valuable pigskin player of the game, I still think it has to be Colby Blunt. Colby Blunt, definitely, core number 31 for the Davidson Warriors. He brought it on. Kind of served as a decoy right there, probably on the last play. We talked about what are you going to do? Do you go high percentage? But Coach Sean Smith goes outside of the box. And think about this, Corey. The play before that, they had Blunt at the top of the formation and Jonathan Whitfield in the backfield. They were about to put Blunt into motion, and Coach Eric Collier called for a timeout. So Coach Smith doesn't play the percentages but he plays the trickeration kind of sort of, and he get the ball out to DeAdrian Portlock. But most importantly, the PAT missed by Seth Tillman with his cousin Hunter Tillman serving as the holder, Corey. That's got to hurt. You know, Davidson moves to 4-2 and two in 7A Region 1, 5-3 and three overall. The Theodore Bobcat Nation is absolutely shocked and stunned across the way. The band, the fans really have it moved. But what a huge win for the Davidson Warrior program. And take your cap caps off to the Theodore Bobcats for playing an outstanding game also right. and being able to be atop of the region coming in. But, you know, the Davidson offense found a way to answer when they had to in overtime. They showed a formation that they really hadn't showed before in Portlock has his first receiving touchdown of the season, along with the third passing touchdown by quarterback Tim Johnson. You're right about that. And, Corey, here's the, here's the real thing. About a couple weeks ago, we had Davidson and MGM, and we saw Tim Johnson's second touchdown pass of the season, and we just witnessed his third touchdown pass of the season. And when you see the Davidson Warriors on their sidelines just bouncing up and down at this point in time, you have to be happy for them, Al, uh, because everything that these young men have gone through, again, their coaching staff, not only their coaching staff, but the players believed in one another and found a way to win this game tonight, 14-13 to in overtime. I know Kimberly Dunn's down on the field trying to get uh, our guy Colby Blunt and also Coach Sean Smith to her to talk about this ball game exciting ball game it was emotionally up and down topsy-turvy just when you thought one team was heading to the end zone then boom a turnover happens then the other team shuts them down three and out then boom something else happened gotta love it Corey gotta love it yeah I mean again it came to the top of the broadcast where we talked about the specialist being special and Seth Tillman 
unfortunately missed that extra point, and Joe Montano makes it. And then there's the shock and awe that hits the Davidson sideline that they actually had won the game. Right, right. They couldn't and there was it. no double overtime. It's a 14-13 to 13 win. You mentioned it at the beginning of the broadcast. Who can stay hot? Can Theodore the find a way? And the streak that Davidson's on right. had back-to-back shut, shutouts, wins their third game in a, in a row. Congratulations to Sean Smith and his team. Just like last week, that win by Theodore over McGill sent shockwaves across the state of Alabama. A week later, less than seven days later, six days later exactly, Davidson sends shockwaves across the state, upsetting the number eight team, but also an undefeated team in region play. I got my notes on both sides, court, all kind of stuff taking place, but the score is only 14 to 13. Yeah, you knew a streak had to end tonight. You just weren't sure what that was going to be. And right. again, on a short work week, not making any excuses for the Theodore Bobcats. It just seems that they weren't focused the way they were laser point focus a week ago against the McGill Tulin Yellow Jackets and on the short work week the Davidson Warriors were able to come away with the win they were focused and got the job done tonight and you look at the one loss now by the Davidson Warriors the one loss by Fairhope the one loss by McGill Tulin right we're in a log jam and it's going to come down to who knows the end of the season McGill Tulin and Fairhope play one another who so knows? who knows Don't forget, next week we're going to have Sarah Land and Blunt. That's going to be our MCPSS High School football game of the week. I believe Kimberly Dunn has gotten close to Coach Sean Smith and Colby Blunt. I believe they're trying to line the shot up right now. Davis has just played their alma mater, so they're trying to get the shot framed up to try to get them on to a score. And I know Coach Smith is super excited about this win right now. Yeah, you have to be. I mean, I see that we're ready and we do have both of them together so let's see if we're able to get to Kimberly because she does have Sean Smith now. So we're not able to get a hold of Kimberly Dunn and Sean Smith right now so I think they're going to try to okay a little technical issue we're going to go to another cameraman right there we're going to get it taken care of nothing like live tv there Corey nothing like it so uh we have Colby Blunt and Sean Smith coming up with Kimberly Dunn as we get this uh, game wrapped up here. So let's take it down to the field as soon as we get the shot framed up with Kimberly Dunn with the pick skin player of the week. Kimberly, I'm sorry, Kobe Blunt and Sean Smith. Wow, what a football game. That was incredible to watch. I know that was incredible for y'all to play. So what does this region win mean to you? Um, I mean, we, we beat the first place team. You know, one of the best teams in the state. They're, I think they're ranked in the top ten, and you can see why they're ranked in the top ten. They're, they're a good team, and, you know, fortunately we, we're just able to be just a little bit better there at the end of the night. Um, so it's a huge win, huge win. Confidence builder, and, you know, we'll build upon it and get ready for the next game. So, Mr. Colby Blunt, you were chosen as our pigskin player of the week. We choose a player from our game that we do that we just feel um, that really uh, is the example of what the game was like, and congratulations on the win. So what does this win mean to you personally? Uh, it's big for us, but, you know, the most important – it was a big win. We're going to celebrate it this weekend. But like my coaches say, the most important game is the next game. So if it's starting this week, we're going to get ready for our next opponent and keep getting ready for the rest of the season because it's going to be a long one. Yeah, so it sounds like y'all have instilled some pretty good qualities in these players. So what do y'all need to do to improve on for future games? I mean uh, – <laughs> You just are uh, happy right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, we – I don't know. What do you think, Colby? <laughs> you, know, you want to be you want to be able to execute. You know, we we had some big penalties there in the second half. You know, we'll go back and look at those on tape. You know, when those things happen live, of course, you think they're terrible calls. Probably not terrible calls. Um, but you know, I, we just you want to keep just trying to get a little better and a little better and a little better. You know, I I don't. We didn't give up big plays tonight. Pleased with that offensively. You know. We put some drives together, just had a hard time finishing. You know, we had the big the big run by Colby. Yes. Um, you know, we got to be able to drive the ball down the field 80 yards. Yes. If, if you're going to be successful against um, teams down the road, you got to be able to do that. All right. Well, congratulations on your win. I will let you go and celebrate with your team. All right. Yes, All right thank you.
Work down on the field there, Kimberly, to get both of those guys. And Coach Smith, I mean, he's he doesn't even know what to say, Corey. <laughs> he was speechless. Now the Davidson Warriors 13-38 and 38 all time against top 10 ranked teams. All right, that's going to wrap it up for us. Don't forget, live at 655 next week in Pritchard, Alabama, it's Blunt and Sarah Land for our MCPSS High School Football Game of the Week for Corey LeBounty, Kimberly Dunn. Executive producer Quentin Howard and the entire MCPSS TV network crew, thanks for joining us tonight. And boy, did we have a good one. Davidson gets the win in overtime, 14 to 13. You have a great night.